So I'm very honored to introduce my teacher, Anta Sosen, um, who is with us today and going to be covering Raising a Spiritual Child, which is a manual that she had authored. And um, it's been very beneficial to all of us who have studied it before with her from the day now. Anta Sosen, her education, uh, educational background is in education. She has a master's in education and has been in the field of education for a long time, mashallah. Um, as well as teaching the Islam, the Islamic sciences to those of us who are blessed to travel to Damascus, Syria. We're very honored to have her here. I think there was always a, a dream and a hope that my teacher would visit us here for all of us who have been unable to go to Syria. Um, we make do out for those who are there. So it really is a true blessing to have Ansi visit us here. This is her first time in the Bay Area and we hope it will be one of many, many trips, inshallah, to Ada. Um, Mata Sosan is also a mother of five, so a lot of what she's teaching is of lived experience and also of raising and mentoring all of us over the many, many years that she has been doing so in Kaltadeva. So we will start again and pray, inshallah, that this is a mubarak and blessing um, for everybody. I welcome all the sisters here that are here local, visiting with the Rahmah Foundation, and all of them who are on the online uh, live stream portal as well. Barakalafikum, and hopefully this will be a wonderful session for everybody. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, just saying before, uh, there have been many books written for those of us who are parents or deal with children. There are many books available on every aspect of child rearing. The stages of development, uh, their physical well-being, their emotional, uh, psychological, uh, social, cognitive uh, development, and recently there have been books written on uh, the spiritual upbringing of our children, very recently. Uh, when I started this, uh, there were hardly any at all. Uh, it, it's something important, it's something needed. Uh, uh, many parents are looking for uh, help and experience and uh, guidelines to uh, help or help them with rearing their children and uh, and particularly to focus on the, the spiritual aspect of our Muslim children um, the uh, in, in every other aspect of a child's development we can really make use of the books that are out there and uh, and fine-tune them uh, to our needs easily uh, whereas the only aspect that we have find a lot of difficulty with is the spiritual upbringing of our children. Uh, the spiritual upbringing of our children is something that is completely uh, uh, separate from in, in, in the viewpoint in how we see uh, our children should be raised and how we see um, uh, the whole idea of, of child development. Um, Uh, the, the world view affects a person's writing, a person's research, and, and what the person has, and how they present what they present, and, what the, and how they formulate their ideas. Uh, so even though we can, uh, like I said, make use of all the other books that have to do with child rearing, spirituality specifically is something that is very uh, difficult for us to uh, get. The, there, there have been Western writers, there have been non-Muslim writers, that have written about spirituality, but it does not really mean the same thing that it means to us. Um, like I said, a, a person's worldview colors their ideas and, and, and how they perceive the, the same things that we see and they see in front of us. Uh, an example I like to always uh, talk about is the example of uh, the people of Samarqand. Uh, Samarqand was a land opened by the Muslims and uh, the Muslims lived in it for about 70 years. And uh, when uh, 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 there was a, a very uh, fair Muslim judge uh, uh, that people have heard of, uh, about, they took their case, the people of Samarqand took their case to this judge and told him that the Muslims were in their land illegally, Islamically illegally. Um, their, their, uh, argument was 
that Muslims told us we have three days to, to, to prepare. They gave us three choices. Either we became Muslim or we allowed them to pass through our country to the countries beyond us and we became citizens of their country and paid the tax of non-Muslims or war and we chose war. And when we chose war, they told us that we had three days before to prepare before they would wage battle against us. And they gave us two and a half days. They, they, they surprised us in the last half, the last half day. So the judge uh, brought the Muslims and uh, verified the non-Muslim story. And it, it turned out it was true. And he asked them, after 70 years, he asked them to pack their bags and leave. This was no, no longer 70 years. This was no longer a place that was OK for them to, to remain. So the Muslims, after you know, arguing, debating, whatever, and uh, finding that was there, they were going to convince him otherwise, started actually packing up their bags and uh, preparing to leave. By the second or third day of this preparation, the, the, the people of Samarkand went to the judge and said, we don't, we don't want them to leave. And they had become, they had been neighbors, they had been, uh, uh, they, they, they had been intermarried, they, they, they had, they had, uh, they, there were 70, 70 years of, 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 of common history between these people. They couldn't believe it. And a great number of the people of Salman Khalid entered Islam as a result of this. This is a story that we're very proud of as Muslims, that a Muslim judge would so fair and 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 and, and uh, uh, rule according to Islamic law, even though it were 100% against the the, uh, uh, the 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 Muslims that have, that were living there. Uh, this is something we're proud of that we that we teach our children in history and look at it in the history of the non-Muslims. I read about it once and it, and. Uh, uh, I found it, I forget which uh, history book, and what they mention is how the Muslims duped the naive uh, uh, natives of Samarkand. How they pretended, 70 years later, that they were about to leave in order to uh, 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 play this game with them and, and, and affect their emotions and make them feel like you know, this was something that they were really going to do and have them enter into Islam. Now, we could argue why this historian wrote this version of the story. And you could say that, you know, they like to put us in bad light and they like to uh, always uh, explain our uh, 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 motives in the worst way possible, our actions in the worst way possible. But I believe he was truly being sincere. I believe that this person, to give him the benefit of the doubt, couldn't fathom a group of people that had been living in a country for 70 years, willingly, on their own, without any coercion, except a ruling by a judge, packing their bags and about to be. He could never understand this. So to him, it must have been something that was a trick. It must have been, it must have been uh, 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 something that they were doing to, to, to trick the, the, the people living there. What I'm saying is that our view of life and, and our view of why we are here and our world view is something that is not shared by anyone else. Therefore, it's very, very difficult for us to benefit from anyone that doesn't share this world view in, in terms of raising our children spiritually. So uh, the basis and purpose of of upbringing in Islam. What is the basis? Why, why are we on this earth? You could ask people. In Islam, what is the point of us being created and us being on this earth? Yes? Uh, uh, she said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran very clearly, verily I have not created the, the jinn and the humans, but to worship me. So we were created with the purpose of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's another ayah that is mentioned in the Quran that has to do with the purpose and our existence on this earth, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
on how clear that is. Well, uh, if you die, the Khalifa, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam, he said, spoke to the angels and he said to them, Verily, I am going to uh, 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 place a vice direct or a Khalifa on this earth. So there are two reasons for our existence. We are a Khalifa on this earth, and we are here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that, just keeping these two in mind, will change your entire view of how to raise children and what to do with them and, 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 and you know, what your priorities ought to be and all of this. Why? Because you realize that the, the, the very purpose of our existence and the basis of, our, of, of, of us raising these children is to fulfill these two things, khilafa and ibadah. So um, what our uh, goal is in, 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 in terms of raising our children should be is to raise individuals that are qualified for the role of khilafa on earth and whose life is ibadah. And you might think, Ya Latif, how boring. What a terrible way to raise children. You're raising them with the burden of responsibility. And you're raising them telling them you're not allowed to do anything on earth except worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then again, we come into the, 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 the world view of Islam. What is ibadah? There are two types of ibadah. There's ibadah, that is the rituals that we know, prayer and fasting and, uh, and zakah and you know, specific way to do certain things that are certain rituals. And there is every action that you do with the intention of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So while you're combing your child's hair or preparing food uh, or, or, or working to, to make an honest living or taking care of your health or even having a break and, 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 and having fun and, uh, and uh, visiting family and, and having relationships with your friends, eat every one of those with the proper intention is ibadah. So ibadah is doing things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so most actions that we, that we normally do on a daily basis with the proper intention become ibadah. Um, so we start with what, what stage? What age do we start with? I mean, we know we're supposed to teach children how to play when they're seven. We're supposed to encourage them uh, 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 to memorize the Quran at a certain uh, age, perhaps. When do we start the emphasis, this whole idea of uh, uh, spiritual worship, spiritual upbringing uh, of our children? When is a good time? They say they brought, they brought uh, uh, a scholar uh, this is student brought him a two month old uh, child and said, When do I start uh, instilling uh, spirituality in my in my uh, child? And he said, You're already two months late. How old is he? Two months old. You're already two months late. So the idea is at birth or even before birth, when you choose the spouse that you choose, when you, at the very beginning of marriage, the, the, we are told to choose a, a spouse that will help you in your uh, path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that will help you raise children as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would please. So people now, they you know they have a lot of studies where uh, there's these debates. What uh, uh, affects you more, your genes or your environment? The, uh, what you inherited from your family is really, really interesting studies. I mean, they have Mostly they, they do these on twins that have been separated at birth, and then when they bring them together, when they when they get to meet both sides, they find they, you know, it's it's shocking how many things they, they have in common. Even up to you know, this one, these these two girls, they were wearing nine rings on their fingers, or these two men who had built the same exact. Um, bench around uh, a, a tree in their house who had named their dogs, had had three dogs and had named them the same names or things like this that really are uncanny. But at the same time, you have the, the whole idea of how strong and now this is even uh, uh, emphasized much more than the idea of genes. How much the environment influences you. 
So whether it's you're born with certain tendencies and then you want to work with them, or whether it's the environment, either way, both things start very, very early. The other thing we need to know is we all realize that um, people, people are born, you would say, you know, this child was born with a temper. Ever since they were a baby, you know, or they were born uh, uh, very active, or they were born uh, uh, since, since this child was very, very young, um, they've been a, a very pleasant and smiley. And there, there's a way, there's, there's, people are not all born the same. And you can see this mostly in a family where you have brothers and sisters and that are so different. You are born in a certain way, yet we all know that you can help work on this, either develop something that is really, really good. I remember a friend of mine, she lived in the States and she had two children and she was telling me how intelligent her children are and how she had them in the gifted program and how unfortunately she couldn't come back to the Middle East and raise her children there because there were no gifted programs for children there. And then as the conversation went further, I found out from her that her daughter, who was nine at the time, wakes up on her own for the Hezhu. Wakes up on her own to pray the Hezhu. And uh, uh, is, is, is constantly uh, 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 doing extra prayers and, and loves to read Quran and all on her own. And then uh, when she was 11 years old and uh, she had re reached puberty, she, she came to her mother and told her, I'm putting on hijab today, all on her own. And then I said, I started thinking, she believes that her children are gifted intellectually and that they, she, they would be missing out if she didn't put them in uh, the gifted programs that they have in the West. But the truth is, there's so many such programs. And there's not, uh, 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 yeah, there are so many uh, 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 people and, 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 and young children that are uh, gifted intellectually. Um, and, and that have uh, all sorts of uh, opportunities being made uh, available to them. Where is the actual need for people that are gifted spiritually? And she didn't realize that her daughter had a spiritual gift that could not be really uh, 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 developed unless she took her to a some country where there were people that could take care of this and the, the, the girl missed out on this. And I thought, subhanAllah, I voiced it. But I mean, it was in passing. She's a friend of mine, so it was just this one visit that she released, and uh, nothing came of it. Years later, her, sister, her daughter came to visit the Middle East. She was a renowned uh, physician, uh, who had, you know, finished medical school very early, and uh, was doing her. Uh, uh, specializing in something uh, amazing. And I remember this was the girl whose, whose mother told me about her getting up at night at, uh, uh, when she was nine years old to, to pray the Hijrah on her own. I was so interested in meeting her. And when I met her, she was like a paper doll, two dimension, nothing. It had completely shriveled up. The spiritual gift that she had, if you wish, was now developed. Everything else was developed at its expense. I'm not saying it's an either or, but what I'm saying is sometimes we need to really realize that just like you will see a child who's gifted and you'll say, I need to work with this child to allow them to develop this intellectual, let's say, gift, spiritually it's the same thing. All of us have this tendency to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it needs to develop be developed, and it needs to be disciplined, and it needs to be fine-tuned, and it needs to be refined. And this is what we're doing when we're doing tarbiyah. So there's the whole idea of we need to start early, be it environment or genes, we need to start early. There's the whole idea of since there's something called disciplining and, and, and developing and, and helping something grow, then we should start at a very young age as well. And uh, the third thing is habits that are formed at a very young age are very difficult to break. So imagine if they're the good habits, all the, the sunnahs 
that the child already has. You know, I have people who come to Islam at an older age. Sometimes I see them eating with their left hand. I say, your right hand, are you left-handed? No. But they just got used to it. And there was nobody, so they, yeah, they, they have to be reminded. They, they forget to say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. They, uh, uh, the whole idea of prayer, I remember many people saying to me that when they first started praying as adults or young adults, that getting into the habit of, of, of breaking and interrupting whatever action you're doing five times a day was alien to them. It was something that, you know, once they immersed themselves in doing something, they would forget about the whole, everything around them. So just getting into the habit of praying five times a day was difficult. So we know, you know, the idea of forming habits at a young age is very, very important. The other thing is, if you want to 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 develop, to, to uh, uh, gain a certain skill or learn something new, how, what is the best way to do it? Step by step. So if you're going to do it step by step, the earlier you start, the better, because it's going to take time. It's layer over layer over layer over layer for you to be able to understand, for you to be able to comprehend, for you to be able to internalize certain things. So the earlier we start, the better. And then there's the whole idea developmentally of there being windows. There's the best time to do this. There's the best time to do that. It doesn't mean if you miss it, you, you lost completely. But there is a best time when it's really uh, easy for you to do. So that's uh, the whole idea that, that of, of uh, the importance of uh, spiritual upbringing being something that should not be delayed and being something that you should start at a very young age. If you think about all the very important skills and not so important skills that people raise their children to do, be it sports or music or uh, learning a second language, they always emphasize the idea of the younger you start, the better off the, the child will be, the, the, the easier it is to, to gain this. Is so it a bilingual? You can't be a bilingual person unless you started as a, as a child at a very young age, uh, uh, and, and so forth. So there's the whole idea of starting early. Then there's the idea of uh, quality. We don't want to just raise our children to be Muslim. The Prophet says, uh, Get married, have many children, because I will show you off amongst other amongst other nations. So we're going to be, you know, something that he's going to hold up to to people on the day of judgment. But in another hadith, he says, the Prophet says, "Innakum yawma idin kathir." He's talking about there will come a time when people will all um, be against you and 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 attack you, like uh, uh, the people that are eating attack uh, a, a, a common dish that they're going to eat, and. Uh, and, and so they asked the, the Prophet, he said, listen to the Prophet, why? Is it because we are few in number? There's, there's so few of us that they're able to all attack us from, from all sides, like, like people that are eating, attacking a single uh, common dish? And he said, no, no, on that day, there will be many of you, you will be great in numbers. But you're nothing like, but you're, you're, you're like foam. The foam, you know, when there's a flash flood, how the water bubbles, you know, like foam. And then, you know how you pour a, a soft drink into a glass and you think it's overflowing, it begins to overflow, but once the bubbles settle, you just have like a fourth of it full. This is, this is a wutha on those bubbles. You're, you're like foam, you're like bubbles. There is no essence, there is no, uh, 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 reality I mean, to, to, to your faith. But quality means, it means here, the Prophet is, is saying that quality is something very important as well. Uh, which means, and, and you know, we, there's a hadith that we all know about perfection, about uh, the importance of perfection, where we say, in Allah, you all know this by heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them. If one of you is going to do a deed, for them to perfect it, right? When did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa say this hadith? Does anyone know the background of this hadith? It's so interesting. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said this hadith when his son Ibrahim died. And he had cried. And he was sad. 
and he went, they went to the uh, graveyard to bury him. And they buried Sayyidina Ibrahim, and they did a, a sloppy job with covering the, the grave with dirt. And he looked at that sloppy job, and he started, he started uh, smoothing out the, the, the dirt over the grave, and he said, Inna Allah yuhibu inna adila ahadikum Imagine, at the, at the peak of his pain, at the peak of his, of his uh, 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 sense of, of, of loss of this child, he could not accept that people did a sloppy job. And it was about his son's grave that he said this. Uh, even with this, it did not distract him from saying how important it is to do a, a, a a job well. So it's not, we're not just asking, you know, on, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you whether you did something or you didn't do it, or whether you taught your children some Quran or you didn't. No, we need to perfect it. We need to do the best job of that. Okay, another, uh, these are all introductions before I start. Another very important point that I want to say is the idea of the o overlapping of, 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 of human nature. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَنَفْسِ مَا سَوَّعَا فَأَلْهُمْهَا فُجُورًا وَتَقْوَىٰ فُجُور فُجُور التقوى We're talking about the, the, same, the same human being. They, you have a nafs, you can, you can uh, uh, purify it so that it's really elevated, or you can uh, 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 allow it to, to, to sink to the lowest level. Uh, there's a hadith where the Prophet Muhammad says, don't uh, go to war fighting with people that are sick because a part of them is, is, is uh, they, they have no control over a part of, 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 their, of their being, which is the sick, which is the sick part. Uh, there's a saying by uh, uh, Muslim uh, scholars that goes, al qalb that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, love is like a seed that you plant in the heart, but it grows according to the intellect. So here we say love, uh, emotions and intellect are overlap. And we're saying that it, uh, a person has different parts. This is the Prophet said of the same, but, they, but they're all overlapping. Um, the first Muslim hospitals uh, many, many years ago were hospitals that dealt with the whole Patient. They would have, when a person would be uh, admitted into the hospital, they would have someone come and uh, uh, assess their, 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 uh, their health. And then they would have someone, uh, a nutritionist, come and order food that was appropriate for that person. And then they would have a religious person come and give him uh, uh, a religious talk because maybe it was uh, uh, guilt feelings or, or some sin that he had committed that had brought about the symptoms that he was feeling. And then they would have someone that would come and play appropriate music for him. So that they were dealing, and then they would, and, and, and the way the hospital was uh, designed was so that there was always a courtyard that had water and, uh, and, uh, and plants and trees. So there was, you, they would take, so, they, they, they realized that a person to get well needed to eat good, needed to feel good about themselves, needed to feel, to see beauty, and also had to be taken care of on, on the level of, of, of their health. Why? Because they realized that all of these interact with one another. So what, what we're about to do now is, is, is not very, uh, it's not very true to nature. We're just going to be talking about the spiritual aspect. But the, the reality is that you can't be raising a child and, and, and helping a child spiritually without all the other inter, interlapping and, and, and uh, overlapping and, and, and interlocking with, with what it is that you're doing, uh, just as an aside. Okay, here's the hadith that we, that, that, the, that the whole premise of st starts from. This is the hadith. There are the different uh, uh, narrations of this hadith, and this particular narration is the one that I felt really, really helped me putting this together. Prophet says, Every newborn is born 
in a state of fitra. Until they are able to express themselves, until they are able to speak. So after this, his parents either, after he's able to express himself, his parents turn him into a Jew or a Christian or a Beijing. But which means they instill, soci socialization comes and they instill in him a particular religion. But every single human being is born in the state of Futan. This is what the Prophet says. And he doesn't say Islam because Islam is Futra. So what is this Futra? This it seems like if you want to raise a child spiritually, you need to maintain their Futra. You need to maintain this particular Futra that they were born with. What is this Futra? What does it mean? You can find so many different definitions and so many different people gra grappling with, you know, trying to, to put together and formulate an, a, an idea of what it may mean. Is um, there is no specific hadith or ayah that tells you what futra is. Um, there's there's a, 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 an ayah in Quran that says, When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before we were born, when we were still a, a, a potential human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed us and spoke to us and said, Am I not your Lord? Let's do it up. And we said, Qalu bala, shahidna. Yes, we believe this, that you are our Lord. And, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us, don't come on the day of judgment and say that we didn't know. So before we even came to be uh, an embryo in our mother's wombs, we had an existence where we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to us and, and told us he was our Lord and we we admitted this. Okay, we asserted this. This is the fitra that we are born with. The, the innate feeling that there is a greater being that we owe everything to. Okay? Now, uh, in order for us to, to, to maintain this, we need to go through three in my opinion, we need to go through three stages. The first one is to experience Allah's blessings and wonders. How can you get people to maintain this putra? How can you get them to maintain this belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at a very young age? They need to be filled with wonder. And if you really think about a child, a child is filled with wonder. What makes a child stop you as you walk along because they see a little ladybug uh, crawling or an ant crawling on a on a on a on a uh, 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 grass blade, what makes them pull back when they want to see how something, you know, how uh, what a bird is doing, or, or what the waves look like, or or even you know, things that you see, they're so uh, unimportant to to uh, a child, right? Are still you 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 develop a callousness on your eyes, where. You can't stop and, and, and be filled with wonder every moment of the day because you need to do stuff. Okay, it's, you know, for survival. But a child doesn't need that. And every once in a while, you need to break out of that so you can still experience the wonder. So a child sees the wonders and they long for a closeness with the Creator. This is what happens to the heart. When you see all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, and when you realize all the wonderful things that fill you with awe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created around you, that's when you want to be close to this creator. To be able to be close to this creator, it gives you the incentive to form a relationship. How do I form a relationship? How do I contact? How do I get close to? How do I make a connection with this creator? Through worship, ibadah. And worship is, is twofold. It's the, 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 the rituals that you do on a daily basis, and it's how you, it's how you treat others around you. So, which means if we want to raise, or we want to uh, uh, think about a, a child's spirituality, we need to, number one, make sure there is a lot that is made available to them to fill them with wonder and fill them with gratitude. SubhanAllah and Alhamdulillah. 
And once they have this feeling, then they they want to pray. You know, they're more than willing to let's pray to Allah. This brings you closer. Let's thank Allah. Let's make dua. They want to do that. And once they they're they're doing that, they have to realize that worshiping Allah subhanahu wa taala is not only by doing a number of rakahs. It's also by tuning into the people around you and being kind and being gentle and being loving and being sharing. So there's that. But our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a gift. It's something we were born with. It's futra. But to maintain it, it needs, we need to tend to it and care for it. So if you want to simplify it all, in Arabic I called it dhok, dhok, insha. Dhok, to taste. The, 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 the wonders that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Talk. Talk to, 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 to long for, to crave. To build a relationship. In English, you can say to sample, crave, and strive. Sample the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the wonders all around you. Crave a relationship and then strive for it. Okay, so the components of fukra or spirituality, from if we talk about these three stages, then for each stage of, of a child's age, I'm going to be talking about five different things. The first one is, to, for, for the word to experience, I need to always have something for that particular stage that appeals to their senses, their five senses, and to their brain. So that they're continuously thinking, subhanAllah continuously uh, uh, feeling, alhamdulillah, all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. The next thing is, I need to foster the longing inside for a connection with the source, sorry, Oops. Okay. the source of all that is good and beauty and greatness. And the third thing is, I need to teach them how to have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the points that we will be focusing on for each stage are cognitive, Okay? Emotional, worshipping, and we said ibadah is not just the acts of worship, it's also uh, uh, so that's the, the social. And then for each stage, there's there are certain dangers or um, uh, things that you need to look out for that are not there in, 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 in other uh, stages, or, or more important here. Uh, we were taught I don't know how many of you have heard this uh, as a hadith, and I looked extensively for, for, it, you know, I was willing to use it as a hadith even if, if it was da'if, but it, it, I didn't, I wasn't able to trace this to the Prophet sallallahu The closest I traced it was to say Ali, the Abi Talib, the the idea of the the, the saying that goes la'ib wa la'ib sab'an, adib wa la'ib sab'an, sahib wa and it goes on. But the, the point being these these three stages. But in the end, at first I was really disappointed that I couldn't trace it to the Prophet. And I was so, you know, I had built this whole theory on this hadith. And then I said to myself, well, we, we base uh, 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 theories on, on sayings of, 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 of scholars and scientists and researchers. And, and here's a Muslim person who has a Muslim view, most probably a Sahabi, most probably Sayyidina Ali, uh, what more reason did I need than to base this on, on this saying? Had he, you know, here's somebody infused with Quran and, and the love of the Prophet and, 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 and seeing things correctly, and if he gives me this advice, to me, that, that was enough. So the, 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 the three stages, the three basic, basic, Big breakups are uh, playing with your child for five for seven years, uh, discipline your child for seven years, befriend your child for seven years. Here's the syllabus for it all. We have the stages. These are the stages. This was all the introduction. These are the stages. I have first parents in the preconception stage and pregnancy. I'll talk about that. But then there's the whole idea of a comp need to comment on the word play. What, is, what do we mean when we talk about this first seven years being play with your child? Well, play with your child definitely doesn't mean buy them toys. 
and it doesn't mean allow them to play. And it doesn't mean, this is one, one of our favorites, teach them everything through play. Teach them everything through play. What it means is play with. Play with that. Play with your child. So when you're playing with your child, you're spending time with that child. Focus time, playful time, fun time, happy time. And this is something so important. And if you go back and you look at the Sunnah, and you see how the Prophet وسلم, treated Sayyidah Aisha and, and his other wives as well, and if you see the hadith between him and uh, Jabir when uh, 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 Abdullah bin Jabir, when he asks him, have you gotten married? And he said, yes. And he said, who did you marry? Uh, uh, someone young or someone older? He said, no, I married someone older who has who had been married before because I have seven sisters and my father died and I can't have her be, you know, feel that she's uh, their peer. She needs to take care of them for me. The Prophet said before he heard the excuse and told him that's a good idea, asked him, uh, why not someone young to laibu for you to be playful with? And people think about playful in only one way, unfortunately, everything now is thought about only one way that playful here is a vital stage, a preliminary stage of any important relationship. Any important relationship start, should start off with the stage of playfulness, spending time together, focused on one another in a playful, fun manner. But this is, here it is being emphasized again. Which means, in order to have a close relationship with this child and have this child be attentive of what I say and my needs and my advice later on, there needs to be a very important, there needs to be a very strong relationship. And for this relation, strong relationship to form, there needs to be a, say, a stage of, fun, of playfulness. But there, this whole idea of play is something very, very important and very, very vital that we are either too busy or we feel Islam is too serious for or we think is a waste of time or we feel, you know, would be better done by someone younger or someone instead of us or someone. It depends. But when I was a young girl, when I was nine, I wanted to uh, uh, open up an orphanage. This, is my, this was my aim. Life. And I would often be drawing, you know, uh, floor plans of how the building would be and where they, you know, how I, how I would seat them and what each floor would have in it. And my mother's a very interesting woman, so she would have these conversations with me. And she, one day she asked me, who will be bathing these children? Who will be clothing them? And who will be, I said, oh, and I only read stories with them. And, oversee, you know, there'll be people doing that. And she said, the people doing that are going to be the parents, not you. I remember how that shook me. I was like 11 or 12. The people doing that, she said, the people that are with your child on a regular basis, the people that are spending time bathing and dressing and talking to as they feed them and, and playing with them and as they do all the different things during the day, are the people that are closer to your child than you. And those are the ones that are forming a relationship with the child, not you. But that's scary. <coughs> now, when we're talking about we need to have a strong relationship with our children, it means that during the early years, these first seven years, this, this and one of, and, and the Prophet or uh, this, this uh, Sahabi is, 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 is tipping us that the way to form a close relationship is through play. There ought to be on a regular basis, I'm not saying every hour, I'm not saying every minute, but there should be something regular that's going on in your life with this younger than seven year old that is playful so that they feel, so that a bond is forming that is the very, very strong and very important. So here we're talking about the, the, the stages. The first stage being parents and the preconception stage. First, the first step you take in, in, in raising your child spiritually is 
yourself and the person that you're going to marry. So what is your intention in getting married? There are certain people that only want companionship. There are certain people that just want status. There are certain people you need, you know, to start with a Muslim entering marriage has a completely different intention, different idea. And one of the intentions of the idea is, I want this partner to help me get to the akhirah, and I want this partner to help me raise children that are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that, that is where you, you should be thinking. How could you marry someone who doesn't pray? Until you get them to pray before, before the marriage, you need to, you need to work on. How can you agree to, to, to marry someone uh, to whom Islam is something not important? The, the whole idea of when I want to raise this child, I need to choose the spouse accordingly. This is number one. And the intention should not be a selfish intention, just so we could, you know, enjoy ourselves and have fun and whatever. The second thing is, this, there's a spiritual aspect to a marital relationship. When you are living with another person, it isn't as uh, we see in the movies and cartoons and whatever, and then they live happily ever after. It is hard work. It is a relationship where your ego, your very self, will be tested time after time after time. No one can test you like your spouse and your children. No one. These are the people that are living with you. And these are the people who touch your ego. And these are the people that test you in, 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 in the most uh, uh, personal way possible. So are you able to deal with whatever happens to you and this person and you and this child with, in, in, in terms of uh, 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 what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants? I used to teach people that every relationship is a, is a triangle. It's never, in math, we learned that the shortest uh, 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 distance between two uh, uh, points is, is a straight line. This is what we learned in math. But in Islam, I always tell them it's not. The shortest distance between two people is always a triangle. When a person does something to you, you, you filter it through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to tell me something? This person, they're upset with me, yes, and they're upsetting me, or they harm me, or they hurt me. But is there a message in it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me? Is there something that I can, that I should be thinking about? They will be held accountable for their deeds. I'm not uh, saying that everything that happens to me is, is my fault and they're not held accountable. But I need to see it through what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from me. And before I, and it's never tit for tat, before I retaliate or I hurt this person with a word just like they just hurt me, I go through tatwa. Uh, tell my servants to say what is best, not what is fair and not what is true and not what is uh, uh, equal to what they did. Uh, but always what is best. Uh, uh, why? In order that you get reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So before I uh, 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 retaliate or tit for tat or, or treat this person the way they just treated me, I, 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 I filter it through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How does Allah want me to react? How does Allah want me to? And it doesn't mean that you're uh, a person with no personality, that by choice you choose to get reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by treating a person that you have decided to live the rest of your life with kindly. And kindness begets kindness. But the whole idea of before you become a parent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you through each other to develop each other spiritually. Furthermore, as mothers, we even get an extra dose of this. Because motherhood, your role, sorry, your role as a wife prepares you for motherhood. All of a sudden, you're attentive of someone else in your life attentive of their needs, attentive of their wants, tuning into, and we're more capable of tuning into other people's feelings than, they, than, than men are. So this tuning into this other person is helping you later on when you become a mother to be tuning in completely and fully to this child. Another thing that prepares you or prepares our children spiritually, your good deeds will definitely affect this child. Our bad deeds, that is in Wazir al don't affect the children. The, the sins of the, of the fathers are not in Islam visited the sons. But the good deeds, وَكَانَ أَبُوهُ مَصَالِحًا in Surah Al-Kahf. And their, it was their, their 
great, 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 seven greats grandfather who had done a good deed that saved those two orphan boys and and allowed Khadr to come and build uh, 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 to mend the wall so that their uh, treasure would not be exposed. He was their great, great, great grandfather, seven great, seven greats. So this whole idea of um, the good deeds affecting the, the child. Hello. During pregnancy, oh, uh, this also affects and influences the child's spirituality. The first and foremost, the most important thing is your halal source of sustenance. Only consume what is 100% halal. And when I mean halal, I don't mean the biha only. I mean, how, what is the source of a person's income? Are they really getting their, their paid for something that they're really doing? Uh, uh, is there there are all sorts of ways that can contaminate our our income, and we need to be very very careful about how halal 100%, and especially food, anything that we buy food with should be from a 100% halal source. Uh, the other thing is, how much worship do you do during this prayer? I know uh, uh, a young girl who, who learns memorize Surah Al-Baqarah as a child, and people go, oh my God, she must be some amazingly wonder, wonder child. You know, she's been memorized, if she memorized uh, Surah Al-Baqarah at such a young age, she'll memorize the whole Quran before she's dead. And then the rest of the Quran was normal. When they asked the mom, what is this, you know, your daughter, it's amazing how quickly she memorized Surah Al-Baqarah. She told them, I used to read Surah Al-Baqarah aloud daily throughout my entire pregnancy. But the child had heard it. It was, it was there. As Pablo worship, dua, the dua that you made, uh, we all are reminded of Sayyidi Maryam, uh, uh, the, the, the mother of uh, Sayyidi Maryam. She was a barren woman who could not have children. And uh, she saw, they say she saw a mother bird feeding a baby, the, the, her, her little uh, 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 fledglings in the, in, in the nest. And she made dua, Ya Allah, please grant me a child. And she became pregnant. So when she was pregnant, she couldn't believe, here she is a barren woman who could not have children, that Allah actually answered her prayer, and Allah actually answered her prayer, and then she was pregnant. So her immediate reaction was, not thank you Allah, not well, alhamdulillah, finally. Her immediate reaction was, what is the most valuable thing to me? How do I thank Allah by offering him the most valuable thing to me, which was this child? I have granted you, Ya Allah, what is in my womb, free unto you. But you were dying for a child. That's all he wanted, was to have a child. But I have to thank him. I have to thank him for doing what he did for me that I never dreamed would happen. So she, while she was pregnant, she vowed that the child would, would go to uh, uh, the temple and, and, and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the temple as soon as she was capable of doing so. What have you, what promises have you made to Allah with the child that is in your womb? This is all, these are all part of how the child will be. Uh, uh, what is your relationship like with your, with your, with the child's father? What is your relationship like with your family, with your in-laws? You know, the whole idea of you, you need to be calm, you need to be settled, you need to not uh, allow c conflict to happen. And it takes two to have a real fight sometimes. So if you're willing to let things, you know, uh, that are not so such big issues go, it, it's better for your own nerves and better for the child inside your womb. Uh, the whole idea of relationship. And then the, 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 the birth. There are so many different ways now to give birth. MashaAllah. And people have gone back to everything that is uh, natural and everything that is SubhanAllah, and you go back to and say, the closer you feel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this, every, see how every stage affects and influences this child. But if your life, you're living a life totally devoid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Islam, and then all of a sudden you say, well, I want this child to be a good Muslim. Tell me what the, the formula is. It won't work. Because the, one of the most important things is for you to be practicing Islam yourself and for you to have these feelings yourself because they will be transferred to the child. Um, the 
these are the stages. The first thing is the parents, the pregnancy, we talked about play. Now we're going to talk about the newborn from when they are born until 18 months. Why do I say 18 months? SubhanAllah, at 18 months is when a child uh, uh, it, it is able to discipline themselves in certain ways. I know now the latest fad is uh, uh, toilet training is any age you want, from three to six. It's, it's become, uh, you know, something very, but, but, but physically they can tell you, you know, if you're, if you're talking about a body, a, 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 a child is physically able to be toilet trained at the, at the age of a year and a half. This is when it starts. They're able to pull back their urges uh, this is why I'm saying from newborn until 18 months, this is this is a particular stage. And then we have the stage of uh, pre-10 years. And we said there, there are only three stages, right? But I broke up the three stages. So these are, this is the stage of play with your child. So we have newborn until 18 months. And then we have pre-10 years. 10 years is when a child is able to discern things, the seven, you know, when they're, when they're five to seven years old. This I broke up into two, uh, pre-10 years, from 18 months until four years, and there's a first half and second half, 18 months to three years, and then there's the three, the three and four year old. And then there's the stage of 10 years, a very precocious child will be able to perform wudu at five years of, old, uh, of age, and, and uh, to, to, to know uh, 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 what, the, you know, can, can really follow through on certain directions, um, and some children, it, it, this is the beauty of it is between five and seven. And some children, it, 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 it remains, you know, it stays this way until they're seven years old. Uh, then we have, so this is one stage. Then we have the second stage, which is the stage of um, uh, disciplining the child. The discipline to many people has also very negative connotations. What, what do we mean by discipline? Do we mean uh, uh, punishing the child? Do we mean uh, uh, harming the child? Do we mean discipline? In Arabic, subhanAllah, it's a beautiful word, addib. Addib waladaka, tadib, means what you do when you prune. It's the same word they use, tahdib. Addaba wa haddaba. It's the same word you use when you trim a person's hair or when you prune a plant. You know, it's like forming it, not harming it, but, but shaping it into the, 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 the shape that you want. When we have a preconceived idea of how we want this child to develop, and we're helping them within this. And subhanAllah, this is the age when the child is so interested in rules and regulations, and they're interested in playing games that have rules, and, they, and they're really into how to do things. And this is what you're doing. This is the stage of what we call the beginning of ta'weed. Because the first uh, uh, stage of it is instilling habits. We're supposed to teach our children how ask our which means you have three years of instilling the habit of prayer. So these three years are when you're instilling a lot of habits. But look at I mean, how important it is, the fact that it's so many years to, to, to do so. Then after that, we have the, the, the stage of at 10, they're held accountable, which means from 10 until puberty, a child is responsible for their, for their deeds, and they're corrected. After that, we have puberty. From puberty until 15, we have a stage here where something so important is happening, it is the awakening of a child's spirituality. There are ayahs of Quran that have touched your heart when you are at this age. And, and intense prayer and closeness to Allah that you have felt, that a person can feel at this age, at this stage in life, that they will never feel at any other stage. There is a gift of, of, of being able to tune into on a spiritual level to certain things that we are robbing our children of if we do not make available to them. And this is something very, very important, the whole idea of the spiritual awakening. 
15 and 17 is when they begin to make their own decisions. You raised them as a Muslim, right? But 15 and 17 is when they, regardless of how they were raised, would choose nothing but. They are convinced fully and completely themselves and can argue and can discuss why they do these things and why they choose to be Muslim. And then after 17, we have so many extremes that have to be balanced now. The idea of education, the idea of their uh, um, uh, 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 perhaps uh, getting engaged, perhaps uh, 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 travel, what, 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 what they want to study uh, uh, particularly, how to fit in their Ramada schedule with everything else. This is when you're helping them seek their balance. After 21, subhanAllah, this training period from 17 to 21, then it says if you have done a, a good job, you can sit aside and, 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 and watch. And that you're not watching and, uh, and, and, and not caring. You're there to support. But basically, the hands-on uh, uh, stage is over. But this is what we're going to be going through. And I think we are going to have a break. Uh, and then we'll go into detail, or shall I do one more time? Like, let, let, let me take questions just now, if there's any questions about, this is the whole overview. Yes. My question was in regards to raising your child um, and the, the playful stage, and versus, you know, having someone help, or um, how would you um, explain, um, like say, um, a Halima's uh, existence in Prophet Muhammad's life, like how would you incorporate that, or, or do you think this is just today's time that you're talking about this for today? Would that not be applicable, or you know, having a, uh, do, do, do you understand my question, I guess? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, okay, the, there's two questions here. First, how do we incorporate the whole idea of say the Halima uh, being in the Prophet's life? This was say the Halima was uh, uh, his uh, his uh, uh, nurse mother, and uh, uh, this was something. This was a choice that say the Amina made. This is not what we don't take what the Prophet went through as the rules that we should raise our children by. This was the common um, uh, uh, the custom uh, in Mecca, and the reason was for their well-being, because the, the air in Mecca was so unhealthy that they had to send the children to the desert to be raised and uh, nursed by uh, people where the air was, uh, was healthier, where they would go to be strong. So this was a necessity on one side. The other thing is, many of us are working moms. We have no choice. When you have no choice, and you you, you choose someone. So Halima, if you would read the seerah, was chosen with, with uh, I know she was the person who was left with nobody, but if you hear with the grandfather's uh, 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 discussion with her, how interested he was in uh, the fact that she came from a certain tribe, and the fact that she had a certain name, and he met her husband, and, all of this was important to him. The, the person that we choose to care for our child, because there is a necessity, should be someone that we choose with care. Should be someone that we know is not going to affect them and influence them on the, base, on the level of making sure they take their food at the right time, their diaper is changed, and they, and, and, and they get to play. But someone we know who's going to affect them just by being in close proximity to them. So if, if and, and sometimes even that is not available to us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows whether you've made the, the effort to choose what is best for your child or not, and accordingly, the child will be protected. So it's sometimes you, you have no choice. Yes, that, but, but, but there are cases, and perhaps not amongst you, but there are cases where mothers feel their own social life is so much more important than caring for this child. And so they bring someone in to care for the child and they don't realize that this child is taking on uh, attributes from the caregiver that are alien to their religion and to their culture. Any questions? 
comments? Yes. Okay. What if we messed up on one of these stages? Is, is it too late? But for each one of these stages, as we go through them in detail, for each one of them, subhanAllah, there's a time when you can go back and 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 pick up, you know, the pieces and and you know re-establish or rebuild what should have been built before. So it's it's totally it's totally possible, and uh, it's it's just that it's much easier if it's done at the right time and, and from the very beginning. But if you care enough that you know you feel like they they missed out on something, it can easily. Uh, be, be taken care of, uh, be taken care of later on, and and I, I point those those uh, state those parts out. So yes. I have a question. Salam alaikum, everyone. Yeah. yeah. I have uh, very good experience with the family. I was with them for a long time. And I saw how they were raised as a very nice family, very good Muslims. The mother was converted. The father is uh, like, he got married with the mother just from Masjid. She was like homeless. And he gave her everything as a woman can imagine. They have four girls who raised them in Islamic school where he used to be a board member. And they were, mashallah, everyone used to see the girls as the angels. They are very beautiful, mashallah. And um, the father was very caring. He will not let the mother work, like to be a mother at home. But uh, the thing is, everything changed. The girls, they are no longer Muslims. Everything changed. They were young. They, they changed from uh, the older one changed from 13. When decided the mother decided to get divorced from the father with no reason. There is no reason. She wants just to get divorced. And they changed. Everything changed. Yeah, yeah. Everything changed. And you were talking about maybe it's from like. Uh, where they were coming from, like uh, you were talking about uh, Surat al and the grandfather was good. I'm thinking about the other side also. Like, you know, they they went back to what the mother was before. And this is my question, like how to bring them back since they already say that they are not Muslim anymore. And some of them, they went all the way, some other place that I, I cannot even talk about it. And uh, this is the, you know, still heartbreaking for me. I was their teacher one day, and we still has a relation. I don't know how to bring them back. I don't know, because they know better than I. If I talk to them about Islam, they know better. Yeah. <laughs> The first very important thing I want to say here is the first very important thing I would like to mention is that, that no, in Islam, we do not believe that uh, a person's past, a parent's past, can affect their children. It is the way you raise your children, and at a certain point, it is the choices that they make. So, this feeling, we, we, we mustn't, if we think about the Sahaba, Every one of the Sahaba had uh, a past. If we think about uh, the, the, some of the greatest Muslims that converted, they had a past. And uh, Islam, the Prophet ﷺ tells us so clearly, and Islam that Islam erases that which came before it. So I cannot change. So I cannot say, I cannot say that it's it's the mother's past that actually had. Uh, uh, affected her daughter's uh, uh, lives uh, uh, negatively. This is number one. Number two, 
you never really know what goes on behind closed doors in a marriage. It is so um, I can't think of the word, but it, it, it is so hidden. You know, sometimes on, on the surface of the matter, you, 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 you see something, but, but behind closed doors, it is a different story. It is a very sad story sometimes. I know cases where there are uh, uh, very pious men that are doing uh, a lot of da'wah work and, uh, and, and teaching in the masjid, and then they have very scary lives behind closed doors at home. I know women who teach with the Quran and, uh, and are involved in the community, and they have private time that is not acceptable in Islam. Oh, nobody knows what, and in a marriage, in a relationship, nobody knows what really goes on behind closed doors. It is possible that something turned her away from Islam that happened in the home. And it is possible that is not the issue. And the, the reality of, of, of the matter is, yes, you do your utmost, but it is never guaranteed. Uh, hidayah is never guaranteed. But for you not to feel bad, you do everything possible for you to do. And then, at the very end, and as a child, the child should be responding. But once they reach a certain age, the age of, 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 of choice, sometimes they go off and on a tangent. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is a very painful thing. I feel for you. I know exactly how you feel. Dua. Dua may bring them back. Making dua. And, uh, 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 the dawah that you make for them, and the feeling inside, you know, that the Prophet Sallallahu used to have these feelings. Time after time after time, we find in the Quran, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala telling the Prophet Muhammad to be upon him, to settle down, it's okay, you know, you, you, can't, you can't force Islam upon people, you can't force Hidayah and the light into people's hearts. You can do your utmost, but then you have to stop and say, I did what I did what I was, everything that I was capable of doing. It's, it's sad that things like this happen, and they're happening often now, more than ever before, and that would be a different story, or maybe I can talk about this a little bit in our second, next session. But um, I don't want you to be discouraged and feel like your past, or your husband's past, or some relatives, uh, or some ancestor who will be affecting your uh, uh, children adversely, because that doesn't exist in Islam. لا تزير وزير وزير أخرى It doesn't happen. In the Arqad al-Sas is a hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu says, be careful because certain things are, are, are inherited, but certain things are not hidayah and, and lack of hidayah. They're a tendency for a certain uh, uh, personality. Uh, so, uh, uh, what we do as, as, as people uh, raising children, we think the best, we make dua, we, 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 we do for our utmost, and even when people go astray, we have to wait. I think as, as a community, we all need to really stop and think, what are the things that are adversely affecting our, our children, and how to protect them from these things as a community. Uh, we'll take a break now. <coughs> It was such a wonderful, um, just blessed subject matter. I think all of us, inshallah, are benefiting so much. Um, right now, the masjid has asked that we take this break because they have um, dinner ready for everybody, which will be in about soon in the banquet hall, and also awesome prayer. So we'll take about an hour of break for you to rest, stretch, have something to eat, and also pray. I'm going to ask you kindly that Aziz Elsa needs a break, so we're going to have her take a break separately, inshallah, and then she'll reconvene um, for the second session, which will start shortly after Austin. I think that would be about 6.45, is so when we'll be expected to come back in, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair, and we'll see you then. Assalamu alaikum. We talked about, we had the introduction really quickly, there are no faces here. 
in the introduction we spoke about uh, the purpose for which we uh, are speaking about the spiritual upbringing of uh, our children. Uh, we spoke about two important ayahs. Uh, uh, we spoke about uh, uh, an important saying that is uh, most probably by Sayyidina Ali Karamallah uh, uh, at any rate is, it is a Sahabi that says uh, we talked about the hadith that uh, that uh, <coughs> where the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, says um, that each person, that each child, each newborn is born in the state of Fitra. And um, uh, until uh, this particular narration, it says, until he is able to express himself, uh, and then uh, it says, uh, uh, and then his parents will make him either a Jew or a Christian or a Magian. They, they they will affect and influence his futra. We talked about futra being uh, a feeling of uh, uh, that that uh, had a feeling of uh, um, inner uh, wonder and and this feeling of uh, um, gratefulness to a greater being. Uh, that is inside a person, and in order to, we broke it down into three parts, in order to maintain it, we said that uh, at first a person needs to be uh, on a, a mental level or a cognitive level through their senses and through thinking, be filled with wonder and awe at what they see uh, of, of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, blessings and, and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, signs around him. And then the, the second level is the longing to have a relationship with this greater being. And then the, the, the drive to actually uh, in, in start this relationship by doing a lot of ibadah, by doing ibadah and, and uh, interacting with people the way uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to. Uh, the hadith, going back to the hadith that says uh, uh, seven, seven, and seven. The first seven, we said we're uh, playing with your child for seven. And then we spoke about play, and we and we said it doesn't mean uh, uh, buy him toys or allow him to play or teach him through play. It means actually having an enjoyable, pleasurable uh, uh, period of time where you're focused on one another. And uh, we mentioned how throughout history you will see, uh, or the Sira, you will see that any important relationship starts with this playful uh, period that gives it a basis of trust. Uh, between the two, and uh, creates uh, creates a bond. I didn't talk about toys really quickly. I mean, I, I, I want to mention a few things. Um, not all toys are the same, and not all toys uh, actually are beneficial to our children. We need to be careful in what we choose, and not choose just what everybody else has. Uh, mostly toys that do things, uh, and are specific enough to have an identity and a, and, a, and a name, or that are after a specific character that walk and talk and you know do certain uh, things are not very good for a child's creativity. I'm not talking on a spiritual level, but but I mean, since we're talking about play, I do want to mention a few things about toys. And in some cases, they uh, they're they're detrimental. Uh, to our personality as uh, as uh, Muslims, we need to see when we're buying our children toys that we don't buy them some because when you're buying a, a specific toy that that is fashioned after a certain character, you need to be aware of how much that character is going to be, if not a role model, something something positive that they look they look up to. So it could be totally harmless and uh, and innocent, and it could be. Harmful. You need to. Only you would know. You would need to really think. I mean, we need to be mindful. Is what I'm saying when we do buy our children toys. <clears throat> so uh, uh, the toys, uh, what, what, who they're fashioned after. Uh, mostly toys that that a child can uh, uh, creatively play with 
and have them uh, uh, play many different roles and do many different things with are the most beneficial. And then there's, you know, toys, things that they put together, those are uh, good as well. And there are games. Uh, also, when we're uh, picking games, we need to be careful what to do and, and perhaps adjust. You know, this is where adjustments come. I got these toys, these, this, this game, and it's not a new idea. They're called non-competitive games or where everybody helps everyone else do something and they take turns and whatever. But whoever came up with that idea had children that were fighting all the time and, and a child that was never winning and always feeling uh, put out. And So uh, there are certain games that have in them ideas that are totally un-Islamic that we could adjust ourselves and and uh, you know tweak so that they they uh, they work you know f for our self image rather than against our children's uh, self image um, and when we talk about games i can't help but be terrified that you're thinking you know let's play together you know some that, that it would all be limited to because all games now are are screens and things on on screens and uh, uh, Although we don't want our children to feel like they come from Mars when everyone else uh, uh, has their own, but still at the same time we can we can achieve a balance where our children know how to do how to use these things at a certain age, but they're totally uninterested in them. And I can guarantee to you, if you have, if you can spend time with your children and take them out and have them do things that your child will be more interested in that time with you doing things outside than they will be in this screen uh, ba uh, babysitter that uh, that we so often use and that is can really be harmful to our children. So that's toys. Um, we started talking about the newborn. Uh, one thing I didn't mention when we talked about the newborn was uh, the idea of Adhan. You know, when it is sunnah, when the child is born, for you to call adhan in one ear and palma in the other. And you wonder, you know, what is this doing? I mean, how, how is this helping or affecting or influencing a baby that can uh, 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 barely, uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that it just has been, uh, just has been born, yani, uh, shortly, a uh, short time ago. And uh, it's almost as though you are, Pushing a button, triggering yani, the, the the initiation of uh, opening them up to spirituality. I mean, if the first thing they hear is uh, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. This the, the adhan, if you if you think about it, how beautiful it is, and then again it's being repeated in the iqama. It's almost as if it's triggering inside this child's heart and brain and and very being the 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 purpose of their existence and uh, and allowing something to start growing from that moment, start unfolding from that moment uh, uh, in terms of a closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for those of you who have people telling them, uh, you know, it's really, I mean, you, this is too early to start. We have, uh, in, in many cases, several things that you can use as proof and evidence that, no, Islam did nurture spiritual, the spiritual, aspect or side of uh, a child very early on. So this is about the newborn we're talking about, a child from uh, birth to 18 months. And uh, really quickly, what I'm going to do, remember we said the, the, the five components we'll talk about, or the five points that we'll be talking about in each uh, stage are cognitively, how to maintain this uh, sense of wonder and interest in, in, in the world, and then uh, uh, longing comes with the heart, so how to take care of that child's heart and uh, emotional uh, 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 upbringing or emotional uh, health during that period. And then uh, worship, because that's how we start a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and worship in terms of rituals and interaction with others, because that is the other side of, of worship. You know, some people even believe, or there have been scholars that have pointed out that uh, all the types of prayer that we do, from uh, uh, fasting to uh, zakah to hajj to uh, to salah, all of these are just giving you spiritual stamina to be able to interact with people on an Islamic level. Because every single one of them uh, teaches you or 
disciplines you into being more patient, more focus, uh, and, and, and expands your heart and your ability to uh, put up with people around you. So that, that is why when the Prophet was told about a woman, she fasts so many extra fastings and, and prays so many extra prayers, and she had died. The only thing is, she used to harm her, her neighbors. She, she goes to hellfire. All the prayer in the world and all the fasting in the world, if it's not really touching your soul and having a, 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 a prayer is a change agent. It, it, it changes something in you, essential. Uh, the Prophet was told once about someone who uh, uh, prayed and, and uh, used to commit a certain sin. In one case, it was uh, this person prays and steals, or this person prays and uh, has uh, a, a, a lewd character. And it قَالَ دَعُوهُ فَسَتَنْهَاهُ صَلَاتُهُ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, prayer uh, 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 prevents you from doing that which is wrong. So the Prophet in these cases says, Da'uhu, leave, leave him be, for prayer will be changing his actions. Satanahu will, will, will be preventing him from doing that. So if you actually are praying and still harming your neighbors and they're the people that are closest to you, and uh, uh, it means that this prayer is not, it's not really affecting you. And uh, uh, the, the, the Prophet says, that the side birds of a person will go, will go gray, in Islam, that means they've been praying their entire life, and not a single prayer has been accepted. Because if it's just uh, movements and words that you say, and um, just the habit that you've uh, grown up with, uh, 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 then it's not doing what, what, what it's meant for. So the whole idea of all the acts of worship is to change you, is to give you to expand your heart so that you can forgive others, so that you can put up with others, so you can be kind to others, so that you can give those who prevent you and forgive those who have harmed you and extend yourself to those who have turned away from you. It, it, this, the whole purpose of, uh, of prayer is to give you the stamina and the, and the strength and the patience to, look, to put up with the difficulties of life and the harm of people around you. So uh, it, it, the, 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 immediately after we talk about it for each one component, we talk about the uh, the intellect or the or the co uh, cognitively, emotionally, or the heart, uh, the rituals that they should be learning, and uh, socially how they interact with others, and then the dangers of that uh, of that stage. So, if we're talking about from birth to a year and a half, uh, the, the first thing is the the the, the idea of. Uh, 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 stimulation, you know, allowing the child to see things, to do things, to look at things, and providing them with interesting things for that age level, that they can, you know, not uh, holding them back from discovering and uh, and touching and looking at and, and, and feeling, because this is helping their, their brain develop. And we need their brain to develop because it's very important, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran so many times, over and over again, do they not understand, do they not comprehend, do they not see, do they not understand? Uh, so there's that. Then we need the heart to be in good shape, so uh, a heart that has been loved knows how to love back. A heart that has been given, uh, uh, and, and it's not enough, we, we all love our children, but sometimes we're not good at showing it. So it's not enough just to love, we need love plus proving it to the child. Because sometimes they, they, they have no idea. They don't know that you're yelling at them because you love them and you're preventing them from doing this because you love them. They don't know these are all actions of love until they're much older and they're parents themselves. So love to them means uh, holding them, cuddling them, uh, telling them that you love them. So it needs to be shown. But because a, a heart that has that is settled and feels that it has been loved is a heart that will function and, and, and love others in, in the future. And we know the Prophet Sallallahu how he used to show his love to Hassan Hussein. He used to be their camel, he used, they used to ride on him, he used to stick his tongue out to, to them playfully, and uh, uh, he used to, uh, uh, he saw a man kissing, uh, a man saw him kissing uh, uh, Hassan Hussein, he said to him, you kiss your, your children? Believe me, I have 10 children, I've never kissed one. And uh, the Prophet Sallallahu was not, 
at me and the kid, he thought he was going to impress the Prophet and he said, oh, mother, uh, oh, what can I do if, if mercy has been withdrawn from your heart? This was not something that to be proud of or to brag about. This is not something right. So uh, 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 immediately responding to their distress, to their needs, to their cry, will give them hisn al will give them the ability to trust their surroundings, to trust the, the environment, the, 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 uh, the, their, their uh, the life around them, to trust the people around them. Uh, in many cultures, uh, we're told uh, never to pick up a child if they're crying, or never you know, to let them cry it out, or to let them not get used to you carrying them. I say, why have them if you don't want to get them used to carrying them? I mean, what's the purpose of having a child if you can just throw them in a crib and wait for them to cry it out? It doesn't make sense, subhanAllah, and uh, any distress, you know, the whole idea is rahmah. The Prophet saw a mother bird uh, uh, swooping down at the army. He said, who harmed this bird? And it turned out that uh, some people had taken her babies to, I guess, to, to, to give to their children, you know, when they went back home as pets. And they said, give her back to her, her children. And they put them back in the nest and she went back to the nest. If the Prophet ﷺ couldn't stand the distress, if the Prophet ﷺ couldn't stand the distress of a bird or the distress of a camel who came to him and complained that his owner uh, 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 used him when he was young and now wanted to uh, 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 kill him now that he's older or, or, or uh, didn't feed him well or was neglecting him. Or, if the Prophet ﷺ responded to the distress of a palm tree that was whimpering like a baby because it, it, it yearned for the Prophet's hand, how hard-hearted can we be, become brainwashed to, to, to turn a deaf ear to our very own flesh and blood that is crying in, 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 in the same in, in proximity and we think we're doing them a good, you know, we're doing them good by, by, by uh, ignoring it. So the whole idea of, of loving so that they can love back. Ibadah, from now, we can start, you know, when we dress them, dress them with the right hand first, dress them with the right foot first so that they get accustomed and used to this, it doesn't count for them, but later on when they want to do it with the, with the right hand, with the right intention, they already have the habit and it's not difficult for them to do. Uh, a very important thing is waking up early. All babies wake up early. All young children at this age wake up early and like to stay awake early. This is this is uh, fitrah, and this is sunnah, and this is Islamic, and this is buddhika li ummati fi bukhuriha. And unfortunately, retired mothers been up all night, can't stand, you know, this will be gradually brainwash them into and take this habit away from them and make them go back to sleep so they can sleep later and later and later. This is wrong. And then later on you're lamenting that you have to wake them up for fission and they can't wake up for fission. Had you left them alone to to continue living the, the their futra life, they would always be up after fission. They would always be up at fission timing and, 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 and keep it up. And they can take it up at noon time, that's fine, but still so this whole idea of allowing them to stay, to, to have the Islamic uh, flow of the day up at Fajr and, and, and to continue. Uh, this is a good time for, to, for them to listen to Quran, whether it's you reading the Quran to them before they go to sleep, or whether it's Quran that you put on in the house that they listen to. Uh, a very, very sad uh, memory of my life, subhanAllah, when I was growing up, um, uh, Quran was only uh, 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 the only time we ever heard Quran was when there was a funeral and they put it down, uh, on for the death of a person and uh, to me when I started practicing Islam it was so connected in my young mind with death and, 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 and fear that it took a while for me to to uh, 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 start reading Quran and loving Quran and, and, and reciting Quran and but still I couldn't hear the, the Qari you know I would read it and I would uh, understand it and I would listen to it I would look up the meanings I would memorize but still it took quite some time before I was able to uh, I think it was the first Umrah I did when I when it, it was connected with something positive in my in my mind whereas my children subhanallah sometimes they'll you know, I'll go in like an hour and a half after they've been asleep and the Qur'an is still running. You know, they'll, they'll put it on in their room next to them. It's what makes them feel safe. It's what makes them feel calm. It, 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 you know, they're reciting with it until they fall asleep. 
So uh, this is the time to, for it to be uh, connected to something positive if they listen to it at this young age and in, in, a, in a positive uh, 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 setting. Uh, and then the last thing is uh, uh, how to treat the child. Being patient with the child teaches them patience. And being kind to the child now will teach them to be kind to others as well. This is as far as you can go until a year and a half. And the last thing is the dangers. Anything that comes into uh, close proximity with the child or anyone at this point is, is someone that you have to really uh, study well. Uh, uh, who are the people that they come uh, 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 close to? We, it's so, the, the environment is something so important. We all know the hadith where the Prophet uh, tells us about a person who killed 99 people. And when he asked uh, uh, a religious man, can, will Allah forgive me? He said, how can Allah forgive you? You've killed 99. So he made him number 100 and killed him. And uh, so here we have this uh, mass murderer who's killed 100 people. He goes to somebody a bit wiser. <laughs> he goes to another uh, spiritual person. He gives him the right advice. He says, of course Allah will forgive you, but you need to leave this place. You need to leave this country. You need to leave the area in which you live because this is what's affecting you. You need to go to a place where it's easy for a person to, to, to uh, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on his way to that land, he dies. And the angels come, this is the hadith, and it's so concrete and so vivid. They're, they're measuring the, uh, the, the, the angels that are gonna take him to, help find the angels that are gonna take him to heaven. They're measuring the, the distance. Is he closer to this land or is he closer to that land? And the point being really in, in this whole story, it's like a parable, the, the point being is how important environment is. And that you need to be in an environment that is conducive to obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to go back to the whole idea of, of uh, this uh, uh, child that is just born to, from, from birth to a year and a half, uh, it's very important that we know who it is that he comes into contact with. Uh, it's very important uh, that, that, that you realize that he soaks up the energy of the room that you're that, or the house that he's in. If there's fighting, if people are tired, if there's anxiety, you're going to find a crying, 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 crying. But he picks up on this. And they say towards the end of the day, the exhaustion of the mother rubs off on the baby and the baby starts crying and it's and it you know goes back and forth. So the, the, the whole idea of uh, uh, the more calm and the more peaceful a home is, the more beneficial it is for for the child. And then we go back to uh, uh, okay. So, so now now we're talking about the child from uh, uh, a year and a half to um, five years altogether. The, the the age group, but the first uh, stage being from a year and a half to three years. This is when a child loves to discover things. They're into everything. This is when you're child-proofing your, your, your house. Now, we can go to the extreme where you're so afraid that they're going to harm themselves that you prevent them from exploring at all. But remember, we need this brain to be at its most efficient uh, level. So we need to give them uh, a, a chance to explore, to discover, to be curious. Uh, uh, to put things uh, 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 together, to, to, to find out about things in, in order that uh, uh, later on they can be filled with the wonder of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Uh, the second thing is uh, uh, their heart. We need to respond to distress. Now this time, it's around the time when you have weaned the child, so they're going through a hard time. And it's around the time when you are uh, 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 toilet training the child. So they're also going through a hard time. And the child is feeling independent, but at the same time, with this independence comes a, a, a certain amount of, of, of hardship and difficulty. So they need to be reassured. They may, a child at this point may not be cute and wonderful and lovely like a baby, but um, so you may forget to reach out to him. And the child may be so busy exploring and, and discovering and doing things, they may not turn to you. So you must remind yourself to pick them up and, 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 and uh, hug them and hold them and kiss them and give them uh, 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 reassuring feelings. Um, so there, and, and, and respond immediately to uh, 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 
what they, what they uh, anytime they, they, they need you. Um, in terms of uh, worship, this is when they start imitating. This is when they'll start doing the motions of prayer. And this is when they start memorizing songs. And they start memorizing small surahs. If you if you allow them to, they'll start. They'll, they'll they can perhaps memorize, uh, depending on how. Uh, uh, verbally able they are, but then they, they will. But this is a good time for you to, to put on Quran for them. So one of the things that we do at this stage and, and the next, if you're teaching them an ayah, make it, put it on a recording where it, it will repeat itself two, three times, four or five times, whatever, and just run it while they're playing. Just have it, you know, there as, as they're doing something. I know a young girl, I was telling people the other day, she, oops, she, uh, uh, she, uh, 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 this young girl memorized the whole Quran around when she was around eight or nine years old. Uh, she knew like one third of the Quran by the time she was maybe five. And this child was the most hyper child you can imagine. Uh, uh, we asked her. Uh, oh, we were invited to uh, a party, my, my daughter was invited to a party when she, I think, completed uh, one-fourth of the Qur'an and she was like maybe four or five years old and she had a party for her and had all her friends over and whatever, she had a video. And in the video, to encourage her, her friends, in the video she had uh, uh, videotaped her daughter at different points in her life as she memorized the Qur'an. And uh, my daughter showed me the video. It's it's the most shocking thing you can imagine. She's jumping up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down the bed as she recites. Uh, she's uh, running around the room, running around the room, running around the room, and, and, and jumping over obstacles and whatever, and, and, and saying the surah. Uh, uh, she's quietly putting them all together, and, uh, and the surah is, is, is being heard in the, in, in the background. Her mother's asking her, okay, now, okay, what, what's the next eye? What's the next eye? She's jumping from couch to couch from, from uh, so the entire time, you know, she never, I mean, we have this image in our mind of a child that age, you know, sitting down nicely and angelically and, and reciting Quran. It doesn't necessarily have to be so. And, um, mashallah, she, she, she finished the Quran when she was nine. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, her mother was persistent and she, she had this, and when she said, my daughter really, her, her son, I don't think, memorized as much as, as, you know, as fast as she did. She said, my daughter has this ability to memorize. I, I recognize this in her, uh, her early on, but she couldn't sit still. So why make her sit still? She just incorporated Quran into her, her activity. Uh, so this is a, a time, you know, when they can memorize, when they like to imitate. Uh, another thing is now socially, what do we do when the, we see them uh, uh, actually uh, uh, harming someone, uh, biting, pulling hair, pushing, uh, whatever? Uh, they say the best thing is to show them. You know, a child. Uh, uh, we've been taught that uh, human beings are so selfish and self-centered, and and it takes an effort to be. And and now they're they're. Well, not now, yeah. you know, a while back people, uh, even in research, even uh, 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 non-Muslims have been proving that uh, even babies empathize with other babies and cry when they cry. We used to think, I think, we, we were told when, when I was young, you know, a baby will cry when he hears another baby cry because it thinks it's crying, it can't differentiate between it crying, its own crying, and the other babies crying. And then they have, then they have all these studies that they've done where it, it proves that they are feeling for the other, for the other baby. But whatever it is, at, at, at this particular stage, if you show them the result of their harm, if you show instead of punishing them or yelling at them or whatever, if you show them what you know, see how they're hurting, see they're, how they're crying, it will it, it, it will do something to them. They'll immediately want to fix things or or be nice or. Or, or, or try to make the other person happy. Because a lot of times the harm that they that they did wasn't with the intention of inflicting harm on, harm on someone as much as it was either frustration or trying to get something that they that they wanted. You know, they were focused on something totally different. So that's, uh, oh, okay. Um, uh, then we have the, from the, the, the 
three to five year old. A three to five year old, we have. Uh, uh, is there a extension? Uh, extension? Um, and now we have the three to five year old. Almost completely different. They seem to be completely uh, uh, different than the baby stage. You don't. You no longer see them as, as, as babies anyway. So much that they're able to do at this point is a, is a big uh, growth spurt. Uh, cognitively, this is when you introduce to them uh, uh, science, uh, plants, animals, uh, insects. This is when you show them things that fill them with wonder and uh, 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 take them to zoos and uh, allow them to collect things and classify and, and, and pick you know, the different leaves and, and look at the difference between them. This is when they can really appreciate things like this and uh, and be very interested as well. So that's on a cognitive level. level. On a heart, uh, uh, yeah, an emotional level, you, you there are a lot of no's now. There are, there, because the child is independent and trying to do so many different things, this is when you really have begun to uh, say, you know, prevent them and tell them not to and, and, and uh, 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 rebuke them, and uh, therefore we need to uh, not forget to, to balance this with uh, 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 showing them our love for them. You know, even though they're not asking for it now, but still we need to, uh, and we need to be very clear that it's the action that we don't approve of, not the child, because there are so many no's in in, in a child's life at this stage that they may start feeling bad about themselves. So it's this that I don't want you to do, but not, you know, it's not you that I'm upset with. And uh, uh, this is when their day has really, really, you really need to enforce the Islamic uh, uh, routine during the day. How do we dress? How do they dress? Uh, a, a child now, we said, after four years of age, they ought to have their aura covered. Uh, so an aura is between the navel and the knee, be they male or female. So this is when, uh, uh, and things like this, subhanAllah, when we, we don't realize them, we feel like, you know, it's bad enough they can't wear shorts outside the house. Why not allow them at least to wear them inside the house? But if you don't realize that this is not an Islamic uh, uh, way of living, and that Islamic uh, rules and regulations concerning uh, dress not only uh, uh, apply, there are certain rules and regulations that apply outside the home, but there are ones that apply inside the home, and they are a cause for calm and a cause for happiness and, and, and uh, 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 tranquility in the home, as opposed to, uh, in many cases, conflict and uh, 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 a lack of angels overall. So it's from now that a child, you know, about, about beyond four age and above is when they are completely covered between the, the, the navel and the knee. And, uh, and, and they're living, and, and the, their daily routine should be Islamic, you know, waking up early, staying up early, uh, uh, the whole idea of uh, 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 respect, respecting things, respecting people. Uh, uh, perhaps now they can memorize the Quran. Perhaps now, uh, the, the Adhan, sorry. They can memorize the Adhan. Uh, the Adhan and the Iqami could be something that they would be able to memorize. Uh, Fatiha, small surahs. Um, a a child is totally capable now if you give them the time and, and, the, and the encouragement. Uh, du'a, if, if Quran is difficult for them, certain du'a, you know, the du'a of eating, the du'a of sleeping, the du'a of riding a car, if we do it together as a family, can become so easy for them to, to memorize. Uh, uh, interaction socially, Explaining now. Before we just faced them with the with the uh, uh, result of, of uh, their actions. Now you actually explain to them that uh, you see what happened. Uh, you see how this person feels. You see how uh, they uh, they're sad. How do you you know? How do you think? How would you feel if somebody took away your toy or someone uh, uh, pushed you or, or left you out? Or you know, you start. You can you can explain to them. Um, the, uh, the the dangers. Uh, who do you have working in that in, 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 at home with you? Do you
you have a driver? Uh, do you have a, a maid? Do you have uh, uh, the, 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 the nursery where you take him? The, uh, the teacher uh, of the preschool where he goes to? Uh, uh, anyone that comes into contact with the child on, on a regular basis is someone that you should really be carefully watching and, uh, and, uh, and continuously keeping up with. So then we come to the second stage, which is five to seven. This we call, in, in fuqah, we call it the age of tabiyiz. Because they say, you know, a child before tabiyiz, they say a child after tabiyiz. And what is tabiyiz? It used to be a cut of ages of seven. But then they realized, you no, know, some people, some children from the age of, of, of seven are capable of dis discernment. And they're able to tell the difference between certain things and, and they're able to follow all the the uh, the uh, uh, stages of wudu, for example, they're able to uh, uh, explain to you uh, 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 about uh, in terms of Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, in terms of prayer, which prayer, you know how many rakats for each prayer and, and and things like that. But this particular age is getting close to. This is where you begin to encourage them. Uh, when they come to pray. You don't say anything when they don't. But when they do, you, subhanAllah, uh, sometimes something as simple as putting your arm around them after you finish uh, uh, salam. Something as, as, as small as stroking their head. Something as small as, as, small as a, a, a smile. You know, looking at them and smiling or giving them a, a, a little kiss will, will do wonders. This will really affect them and, uh, and uh, make the whole feeling of prayer something uh, positive uh, uh, thing that they look up to, that they uh, perceive. Uh, we're, we're getting them ready for the, the, the idea of, uh, of, of uh, becoming responsible, of learning uh, how to do the prayer, of uh, 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 all the things that lead up to the prayer. So we need to really be careful about how they, their, their bathroom etiquette, their cleanliness, um, uh, do they know how to go to the bathroom correctly, uh, do, do they know when to change their underwear? Um, uh, simple things like this that lead up to perfecting uh, 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 prayer when prayer becomes uh, something that they ought to be asked to do uh, are, are all during this uh, period of time. But again, this period of time, subhanAllah, you asked me a question, uh, uh, some of you asked uh, about uh, uh, what if a person has missed all of these stages? And they didn't do any of this. SubhanAllah, from five to seven is a catch-up uh, uh, period. It's also a period when you can make up for the lack of, let's say, uh, unconditional love that you didn't give them, make up for the playfulness that you didn't do, make up for the uh, stimulating them cognitively that you didn't do. SubhanAllah, you have this period between five and seven where it's, you know, they're not distracted by something, you know, a major uh, milestone that they're achieving, and and it's a, they've accomplished a lot. And at seven is when you're going to give them more responsibility. And in between, you have these two years of catching up. So much of what you feel hasn't been uh, uh, done can be quickly and, and and easy if you're you know the other comes naturally. But uh, now, Subhanallah, uh, this will be something that you are. Uh, doing with uh, 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 by plan, so it will be more focused and more uh, concentrated and 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 very effective as well. Uh, why I get this working? Uh, any questions up, uh, about this until now? It's still. Yeah, I mean, I'm... Okay, any, any questions?
questions about uh, what we've covered so far? Yes. You mentioned the dangers in the second stage. Ah, okay. Did I? Uh, the, uh, five to seven? Yes, I mentioned sure anyone that comes into close contact with the child. Are you, are you leaving him with a babysitter? Or is there someone that drives him back and forth alone? Is there someone that helps you at home that the child is left with? Uh, even uh, uh, perhaps a relative, if they, but, but, but yeah, anyone that you leave the child with or the child is with alone or the child comes into close contact with is someone that uh, during this period of time can really have an influence on the child and the child may not be able to express to you, you know, what, what they are soaking up. I mean, sometimes it's not any actions or words, it's just a, a, a presence. It's just, you know, let's say this person, yes. Okay, we all have members of the family that are not as practicing as we would want them to be, and um, you are required by Islam to uh, have salat rahim and to be close to them and not to hurt their feelings. Uh, it's a very delicate balance and yes, it is something that you need to stop and think about. And I wouldn't have them, for example, you wouldn't have them do sleepovers. You wouldn't have them do, leave them there all day long. You know, you would visit with the child. And subhanAllah, the intention of, that you don't want to hurt the feelings of this uh, uh, this uh, blood relative that you need to have salat rahim with and uh, the dua that you make will inshallah protect your child from being uh, uh, negatively affected and influenced by them but definitely we don't leave them alone with anybody that you don't trust Islamically and you fully uh, to, to, to feed them the right, you know, the right food or uh, care for, or not show them the, the oh, uh, uh, we're talking about toys, we didn't talk about, uh, yeah, we talked about screens, we didn't talk about also content. It's, we know the screen is harmful in and of itself, but, uh, uh, but you know, and the content should be beyond, con content should be beyond us, you know, definitely they should watch certain things, but it's, 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 uh, surprising and confusing to me how many parents don't, you know, will categorize anything and everything that is, uh, uh, what are they called? When I was a little girl, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, we, we categorize anything that's uh, uh, a cartoon, uh, what do they call it? Anything animated as okay. I, uh, some of you are shaking their heads, but I know this for a fact. You know, it's, oh, it's for children. Just like if it says it's for children, that it's it's okay for our children. But so much of, of, of that is for children is 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 really uh, for adults. I, I mean this. Uh, uh, I went once uh, as part of a, a class we were doing. We went to Hanna Barbara's uh, Hanna Barbara's uh, studios. And uh, I was doing an early childhood education uh, course, and so I went with them. Uh, so I went with my uh, my class to 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 the studio, and uh, we met all you know the illustrators and the the writers of the script, and and, and 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 I was so you know then I thought Ya Allah everybody the whole world of uh, early childhood education were dedicated people that loved children that wanted nothing but the children's you know, benefit. So I asked, what qualifications does the person have who was running, you know, who was the director, who was the head of the, the whole thing? And they looked at me. I said, what, like, what credentials? What, you know, what does he study? Has he, has he done uh, early childhood education, childhood psychology? Uh, uh, has he, you know, what? And, they, and I looked at me like I was crazy. They said, it's just a stepping stone to something beyond. And I'm thinking, oh my God. And then I started thinking about all the cartoons that I, that I had seen and, and how all of them have a very adult theme, sometimes underlying and sometimes very obvious. You know, it's like adults having fun together in, in, under, under the guise of something, that is something for children. 
and, and, and very seldom is it really truly uh, uh, geared towards children, you know, and, or, 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 or is it written by someone who really cares about children or knows how children should be addressed or should be, or things should be presented to them. So this uh, is something we have to keep in mind, you know, watch, always watch what you're going to have your children watch before they before they see it and see if it's appropriate or not. And sometimes you say to yourself, then I, I, th there won't be anything that we can watch. Then watch together and make comments. The comments that you make will be engraved in their brain. They will never ever forget them. You know, that's not right or that's not, I don't think that's funny or whatever. Yes? relatives or less practicing than um, families, what if the confusion child has within the family where one parent would be practicing another and practicing? Oh, it's in the, in the family itself, the parents. SubhanAllah, this is why I spoke about uh, the spiritual upbringing of our children uh, happening way before uh, even uh, way before we even uh, uh, way before they even conceived, you know, when you're searching for a spouse, you ought to be searching for someone that can help you along this path. And uh, when you start becoming religious, let's say you, you both got married and neither one of you were, was religious, and when you start embarking upon this path of spirituality, uh, sometimes you, you don't want to be distracted by the partner that's that dragging their feet, but you owe it to them because you need to go on this path together. So you have to do something somehow to lure them along so that you're both on the same page. If if not for them, if, if, if not so much for them, for the, for the children themselves. So, but we're at a situation, let's say, where uh, uh, we're at, you know, two completely different uh, uh, opinions. Uh, practicing and non-practicing within the same household, it's not easy, and uh, the children will get confused, and they'll play the differences to their advantage when they get a bit older. You know, they'll ask this parent about certain things that the other parent would never agree to. Uh, so the best thing I feel is to create trust and and respect for the parent that's not practicing between you and that parent and show that parent respect so that they respect your wishes even if they're not convinced. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Rather than make it a two-front two, uh, 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 battle, uh, and make it like you know you and I and, and, and try to present, you know, present things in, in a way, perhaps if they're not gonna be convinced uh, of anything in Islam can be proven scientifically, psychologically, uh, 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 life experience, you know, you can, you can prove the wisdom, because this is from Allah subhanahu wa So you can prove the wisdom of anything that you want to do Islamically in, in so many other ways. If that's what you have to do to convince the other side, then do so. But don't create a, a, a rift between you and your spouse so that the children feel that they're in a battleground and they have to choose sides and they're totally confused. Uh, give the other side enough respect and speak with them uh, privately in, uh, in, in a manner that they will want to uh, 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 hold up your principles with the, with the child. Sometimes that works. I'm not, I'm not guaranteeing, but sometimes that's, that's the, 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 the peaceful way to, to, to do something. Other times, but at all times, dua. At all times, a lot of dua needs to be made. Uh, okay, we have the, uh, I said the five and six year old. Uh, we talked about, uh, uh, we talked about uh, uh, memorizing Quran. We need to feel, subhanAllah, uh, exactly what you asked about here. Uh, I, I have written, we, we need to make sure, hard, emotionally, that the child doesn't feel fragmented and torn between two parents that have opposing opinions. <laughs> and 
but I don't know exactly what you asked about. Uh, so how to do so? And, and you shouldn't add to them the anxiety and the fear that if they do something wrong, it's, it's a disaster. They need to learn from their own mistakes. So we need to be patient with them. Don't, sometimes, you know, uh, especially new parents. I always remember uh, uh, how my son, he got his first tooth when he was four months old. I felt like it was the best accomplishment ever. It was as though I picked up that tooth. <laughs> It was as if he was going to be, you know, it was proof and evidence he was going to be a genius, you know. Everybody didn't get their teeth until they were like seven or eight months, and my, child, my son got his first tooth when he was four months old. Big deal, subhanAllah. So there's, there are certain things that come with being the first-time mom, um, that uh, spiritually even, where you, you know, you have a child memorizing Quran, and loving to pray, and wanting to uh, do all the dua, and all, and all of these things, and you feel like you have, you know, you're raising an angel, mashallah, and this person is going to be the da'iya of, of, of the future, whatever. And then you don't allow them to, uh, you don't allow them to, to, to make the slightest mistake, because it shakes this image that you have, this unrealistic image that you have of them, uh, allow them to be, to act their age, allow them to make mistakes, allow them to move back and forth within uh, an acceptable uh, uh, distance of, of, of uh, doing so much extras and, uh, and falling back on, on what they need to do so that they feel healthy and comfortable and they don't need to uh, uh, question themselves or feel pressured later on when they're older. Relax and take it in stride, and uh, and don't let it get, go to your head. You know this amazing spirituality that you see uh, certain times. It's probably sometimes it will continue, but in many cases it, it may not. So uh, what I'm saying is, you know, don't don't give them the anxiety of feeling that they are fragmented between people of two different opinions. And if you wish, you can speak to your spouse in terms of psychologically, it's not good for them. It's not good for their self-esteem, it's not good for their uh, 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 mental health to feel that they are living in a, in a family where we're torn on every opinion. Let's you and I agree upon one, two, three, and you have to make some compromises that are acceptable Islamically. We'll let the person make some uh, compromises on their side, and then give the child a, 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 a united front you see what I'm saying? Now, this will take a lot of stepping on your own ego in order to turn to the person this way. But in the, in the long run, your children have benefited. So there's that. And uh, as I said, don't give them anxiety about uh, uh, making mistakes. Ibadah-wise, uh, uh, th this is when they love to do a, a lot of things together. You know, they, they really want to act, they get into the adult scene. They want to wake up for suhoor, even though they may not do the whole fasting. Uh, con continue the, the, the entire day. They want to do the jama'ah prayer, they want to pray tarawih with us, they want to have the prayer close. So let them go uh, along with that and, and uh, let them be a part of the, 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 the group, you know, doing everything without letting them feel that you're disappointed that they're not able to continue it. Yeah, don't have high expectations. Just allow them to be a part of this. Uh, Quran uh, here has a lot to do with uh, 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 how you know are they are they able to read yet? Most probably not. Uh, how how many opportunities are you giving them during the day to listen to the Quran that they need to that they need to memorize? Uh, in terms of interacting with others, uh, this is when they really get, begin to get the logic. They begin you know you can really discuss things with them, and you can uh, now you can be firm. This, no, this is not acceptable. Uh, you can't do this. This is when you can really put your foot down about uh, uh, how they're interacting with others, in, in, if they're being harmful or selfish, or uh, um, uh, but at the same time, be very careful that you don't uh, be very careful that you don't label them as uh, being harmful or, or naughty or selfish or. Is whatever you say to them now is, is how this is where their their image of themselves is, is forming. So this is what they'll believe about themselves. Okay. So then uh, now we have the seven seven year old. Uh, the seven year old. This is so important now. These first seven years have passed. 
playfully and uh, fun and the child has developed and grown so much. Now, this is when so often uh, uh, people are totally unaware of what happened during the first seven years and then all of a sudden they, they say, okay, now we need to teach our child how to, how to pray. Actually, what I see more often than that is a child that, that's nine or 10 and then all of a sudden their parents wonder why they're not praying. This is when so the, 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 the order is that we should order our children to pray when they're seven, which means every single prayer, you wake them up for fajr, this is, this is your fault. You wake them up to fajr, sit up and pray. Whether they pray or they don't pray, it's not up to you. You don't have to enforce it. They have three years to, to actually comply. But you must five times a day, remind the child it's time, or order them, or ask them to do the prayer. And then you pretend you haven't, uh, if, they, if they don't, you pretend you don't even see it. You let, you know, you let things, okay, if they were too involved in play or whatever, or, it's time for us get go and pray. And then you go do your own thing. But they have heard this, every single one of the, yes, you ask them to pray with you, or do you say just go? Pray? If you ask them to, if you know they don't mind praying with you, that's great. But if praying with you is, is to them like, uh, uh, you know, the worst punishment possible, then don't. Do it once in a while. Uh, okay. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and then this shows you how that how we're supposed to address children and how we're supposed to teach them. Three years Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave the child to pick up on this habit and, and, and make it really, really strong. And uh, for some children, subhanAllah, from the age five, they never miss a prayer. Or for some children, seven and eight pass by, and you think, you know, you have a child that will never learn how to pray. And all of a sudden, sudden by the end of the eighth year, they become not only people who pray, but people who pray with focus. So just don't give up and keep asking them to pray each prayer and let them see you focused in your prayer. Inshallah, it, it, it will happen. Uh, uh, the, the whole idea is here uh, uh, that, 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 that these years, you know, even th this particular uh, year, the seventh year, I said from five to seven, even seven, you can extend the whole idea of uh, catching up on what, they, what, what a child missed. Okay, so now we say cognitively, now this is a child can really be able to, to learn all sorts of things. And this is when you can give them uh, uh, the ability to make connections and, and present them with information and teach them all sorts of alum, uh, be they Islamic or, 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 or outside the, uh, of Islam, uh, and, they, and they will accept and, and, and really be interested in them. Uh, emotionally, you need to give them the feeling, the security, the security of your of your love and how and how you you care about them. They say one of the most important things for a child is <clears throat> to feel that they are accepted and loved by their parents because uh, that's when you know that can be one of the greatest incentives not to disappoint their their parents or not to to hurt their feelings or not to uh, um, how to show. It's very complex now how to show a child that they're loved at this age. You're not going to, you know, grab them, put them in, you could, you know, grab them and hug them and kiss them and whatever and all of this, but what you need to do is, you know, certain things. Number one, show them that you enjoy their presence. Not that, you know, you really, enjoy, you know, don't be so distracted that they get the feeling that they're not important. They, you have to show them that you enjoy their presence. You have to show them that you, are interested in him when you are together, when you're when you're talking about something together. You need to show that you're happy when they do something, some they accomplish something, and hurt when something goes wrong with them. Uh, you need to show uh, uh, that you need them to show you love. You know, where's my kiss today? Where's uh, you need you need to share your thoughts and ideas because that's helping and teaching them to share their thoughts and ideas with you. Because you can, you're you're the one that's continuously monitoring these thoughts and ideas in order to give them feedback. Now you're not going to sit down, you know, at a, in a chair and say, okay, you know, how do you feel about this? And, and they're going to tell you. So therefore, it, it always helps if you're cleaning the house together, or cooking in the kitchen together, you know, or 
or in the car driving, you know, doing something where it's not one to one and, and it seems contrived and artificial and uh, we're, you know, casually we're, we're, we're doing this together and we're discussing things. Uh, tell him, tell the child that you love him and or her and 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 uh, and, and tell them what you, you I really love and be specific this particular thing about you. Uh, uh, of course, show physical love as well, and uh, always pay attention to their to their different makeup. You know, you have a shy child, and you have a an outgoing child, and you have a child that every child has their own type of personality and own uh, uh, and, and different needs. So tune into each child and, and make sure you give them what you feel they they need. Um, what did we say about Imam Salah Sayyidina Muhammad? Ibadah wise, this is when we, said, we talked about prayer. Uh, interacting, this is when we have to uh, really uh, 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 give them. We teach now, we teach the Islamic adab. We teach them. Uh, uh, how to interact with others according to hadith. You can give, because now they're all into rules and regulations. They're all into games and you know that have uh, rules and, uh, and, and and they really abide by the rules. So you give them, you know, لا ضرر ولا All these hadith that have to do with interacting with others, this is the time to introduce them and implement them as well. This is an interaction. Uh, um, okay, what did we talked about that this uh, is, is a period of uh, getting a child uh, used to certain things. Um, this is where I have the, uh, the dangers. See, subhanAllah, the dangers of uh, the seventh year are, are, are twofold, depending on the parents. Either the parents uh, feel now that the child, they, they've done so much for the child, the child can be on their own, they can be independent. You know, before you were monitoring their eating, their drinking, their, their hygiene, their, and now they really can do so much on their own, you begin to devote time to other things or, other, other, or to the younger children. Uh, this, is, this is an extreme and, and the child can, at this point, uh, you can lose uh, uh, the close bond, or you can uh, for, not realize what they're coming into contact with in terms of ideas, or what they're seeing, or or who they're befriending, or whatever. And the other extreme is the uh, either you, the children, uh, the parents see them completely, or parents are overbearing. Now you're seven, you have to do this. Now you're seven, you have to do that. Until the child feels that they are just totally. Uh, 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 under you know too much pressure, and uh, and they start rebelling. So it has to be you know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala started this age, and the Prophet ﷺ gave us this age all the way up to grade uh, to, uh, to, to 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 age uh, ten as as a period of uh, uh, getting accustomed or or, or developing uh, certain habits. So it's a period of you being very patient and very uh, uh, calm. And and a uh, broken record, you know. You keep repeating the same thing over and over again until they get it, until they practice it, until they they are it, it becomes a part of them without giving up and without growing impatient. Uh, uh, then we have the uh, we, the, the second uh, period is uh, from ten. Uh, we did from seven. Uh, we went to 14, but the, the, from 7 to 10 is the period of, of, of getting a, a child accustomed to something. 10 is the, is the period of when you hold the child accountable. Can you imagine? 10. And think about all the other years when we hold them accountable sometimes for something that's not even their own fault. Or they have no control over. How unfair. But 10, if you have been supportive and giving and uh, patient with this child all the way up into age 10, they're going to really respond to uh, uh, being, be, holding them accountable for their actions. So this is when there are definite yes and no's, and there's no compromise in prayer whatsoever. Every single prayer has to be prayed. And I don't understand this whole idea of fajr being, it's being too difficult. Imagine 
Imagine if you would, you know, you had a parent tell you, you know, candies and uh, or, or sweets and fruit and, 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 and food like that. I just feel it's, uh, that the children are too young for it. You know, it's, it's, why bother giving them something they're too, they're too young to enjoy something like that and depriving them of it. Would you think that way? Would you take something that is totally essential for, you know, uh, 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 healthy food, uh, you know, fruit and vegetables? Uh, I really don't think uh, I could impose that on my children when they're this young. Yeah. Imagine how crazy that would sound. This is how it sounds when you're saying fissure. I really think they're too young to be woke, you know. You really, you really want me to wake them up for fissure? But uh, you're depriving them of something healthy and beneficial and, 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 uh, and good for them. With what excuse? The excuse that they're too young? Too young for what? To, to enjoy what's pleasurable? I had on the, on, on, on the other extreme, I had a, a friend of mine who put on hijab as an adult. She really put it on from her heart, yeah, and she was really and devastated that it took her that long to do it. She had a younger a daughter, an only daughter, and uh, one day, her daughter was like around um, 10 years old, and once she, she, her daughter came to a wedding with the most revealing clothes you can imagine, and I looked at my friend and I said to her, what is this? I thought you put on hijab and you felt so bad about yourself that you, it took you so long to, to do it. Why are you dressing your daughter this way? She said, I don't want her to feel that she was deprived of every, anything. I said, SubhanAllah, what a messed up view. If you feel practicing Islam is deprivation, if you feel that preventing your, 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 your son or daughter from something harmful is deprivation, then you, you really are messed up. Would you let a child of yours play with a butcher knife? and say, no, 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 please, I won't deprive him of uh, his personal freedom. He's too young to, to be, for me to grab it away from him. Let him be, let him play, let him live his childhood. Let him live his childhood. Would, would he be poking uh, stuff into the, the electric socket and you'd say, it's okay, it's okay, don't cramp his style, haram. Let him, uh, would you say such a thing? Of course you wouldn't. Why don't you feel missing fissure? is of the same, uh, at the same level. Missing fajr is dangerous. It's not healthy, it's not wholesome for a child to be missing fajr. So for you to think that I'm a poor child, I'm allowing him to live his childhood, to be, that's, that's you confusing your own uh, view, messed up view of what life, what, what is pleasurable and what isn't, and, and, and uh, 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 imposing that on your poor child. Uh, we need to, you know, at this point, we need to really think. So I was saying, 10, at the age of 10, no excuses. You're after that child from fission until the sun rises, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, waking them up until they get up and they pray. You wake them pray, then you do the punishment deal. You have her punishment. Come pray with me if you think she's not going to be praying. Come pray with me. Or you be the imam. Or, you know, I mean, think of ways, we can think of ways to get them to do things without them feeling miserable, but still, it has to be enforced. So this is what they're held accountable, not only for prayer, but for so many other things as well. Why? Puberty is about to, 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 to hit them. And, 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 and puberty, they're held accountable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For any prayer that they've missed, they have to repeat this, this prayer. And any uh, uh, fasting that they've missed, they have to make up. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not a joke anymore. So there's uh, uh, our 10 year old. Uh, on a cognitive level, uh, this is when the child can really follow logic and uh, debate uh, matters. And, and subhanAllah, this is when you have to watch out for peers. So, uh, 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 to a lesser degree when they were younger, but now definitely uh, peers and the environment. So, think about all the questions that they're being bombarded with, all the doubts that are being thrown at them, make a list of them, or have them share some with you, or collect them from the children of other friends of yours, and this is the time to discuss them. 
this is the time to bring them up and have a debate. Once I had with a group of young girls, I had them debate, uh, I had three or four of them that were very, very convinced of hijab, uh, uh, speak for hijab. And three or four that were wishy-washy, speak against. And then I, I had them switch roles. That was so difficult for them. Because the person, the people that were convinced of hijab said, how can we uh, defend the uh, non-hijab? I said, you have to put your, yourself, your, your, put your uh, feet in the shoes of those who uh, see otherwise. In order to be able to, to answer that, they need to collect all the evidence, all the proof and evidence. So this is when, what is it that they're regarded with? Is it atheism? Is it uh, uh, weird uh, uh, types of uh, human beings we can be? Uh, uh, is it, uh, 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 make a list. What are, what are the things that they're being convinced of? And what are the things that people are uh, 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 drowning them with? And this is when we should discuss them. And this is when they should begin to zoom out and see the whole picture. They need to see not that I am a Muslim in this family, poor me, I'm not allowed to do one, two, three, four, five, and see Islam only as a list of no-nos, and and, 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 and and only see myself and all my, my friends in school that are that are capable or able to do all these fun things. I need to see the Muslim Ummah. I need to see myself not as part of only my family, but as part of part of my Muslim community and part of the Muslims in, in North America and part of the Muslims worldwide and learn about how Islam came to each one of these countries. SubhanAllah, once I, I, uh, I wrote a I wrote a play, uh, oh here, I wrote a play once. Uh, I had uh, a group of girls uh, who had come from the States for a visit. And they were fun girls, and they were, they were full of mischief and, and, and fun. And one of them uh, had an Indo-Pak uh, 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 ancestry, and one of them was Afro-American, and one was uh, of Middle Eastern uh, uh, descent. And they came from, but of course they were all born and raised in the States. And they were all at various levels of mischievousness, but uh, not a single one of them had taken Islam really, really, uh, uh, yani, totally seriously to, to her heart. Yani, their parents were what, who instilled Islam in them. They had come overseas to study Arabic, but they really, I mean, this quote unquote, but they really had come to have fun. Uh, so these, uh, you know, so I wrote a play for them, and subhanAllah, I had them uh, play the parts. The, 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 the parts, but I had written it, you know, with them in mind. And uh, uh, so, uh, what we did was, uh, what I did was, I had them. They were troublemakers in the school, and uh, they had to complete this uh, project that had to do with their family uh, tree. And they miss uh, doing this project, so then they they are given a second chance, and they get to go to uh, this lab where you know they have a, a virtual something or other where, you know, you not only go, you not only are able to push a button and get, you know, all your ancestry, but you get to see, you know, parts of, of you know, you push this new something that had to come out and they and they actually live or see parts of their past. But what they see is, uh, 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 there's a, 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 a ship wrecked off the, the coast of Africa and uh, these merchants uh, come ab aboard and they, may, and, and at first they're very afraid of uh, whoever they're going to see there, and and, and the, the natives of the of the island are afraid of them as well. And then they realize that they're all Muslim and they're all praying together, and they're you know making dua. They make dua, and the dua they make is may Allah as uh, Allah who brought us together with the same faith bring together our progeny in the future, and. Uh, and, uh, and so, and so this is how the place starts. And then we have these uh, these girls, these troublemakers. So then they go and, and each one of them sees part of her ancestry. And one of them sees that she belongs to this uh, prince in Africa who was spreading Islam and uh, who was, you know, the, the, the most renowned scholar ever. And how on his deathbed he's making dua for his uh, project. Not, not none of them will go astray. And. Uh, uh, the other person finds she's uh, connected to uh, a sultan that also was uh, in India, who also people, you know, had spread Islam and had, had brought together uh, uh, India after it had almost 
turned away from Islam, brought them back all together to and, 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 and brought hadith into, into India. And he makes uh, dua as well. And the other person came from Bulgaria, and she was coming to, uh, her ancestors came to Aleppo to study about Islam, and uh, uh, to start with, you know, this is where they, uh, they, they, they were, and, and, and uh, how, uh, you know, studying Islam and the deen was the most important thing to them. They look, each one of them sees يعني, their past, and how, this is the, the, the first image they see. Then they see the decline. And they see, each one of them sees the, their country of origin and their, and their family and their ancestry at their peak of Islam and at the terrible decline. And, and it, it changes them, you know, when they're watching. As Parama, something simple like that, as, as, as going back to see the, the, how Islam came into each country and where that country is Islamically today. Something where you give a, a, a child the knowledge in order that they, you develop the pain, in order that they feel the pain, in order that you develop the, the hurt, in order to heal the, the ummah around them, pull them out of the pettiness that they are living in, in this day and age, where they're acting like 14-year-olds, sorry, in diapers and, and, and with, with, with pacifiers in their mouths. This is, this is what, this is what we're, um, this is what we're raising. This is, this is the type of personality that we're making. You know, just thinking about themselves and thinking about themselves and thinking about themselves and nothing, nothing outside of that. And it makes them the more, the more they do this, the more miserable they, they become. Uh, uh, at this point, okay. So this is we're talking about uh, cognitively. You know, bring in a lot of information to them. Bring in a lot of. Uh, 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 feelings, you know, for, for what's around them. Because by the time, uh, like we said, uh, puberty uh, uh, arrives, it should have been in the most uh, 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 smooth and, 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 and uh, 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 graceful way possible. It's never uh, 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 something that shakes the, the child. Why? Because they've been seeing, you know, they, a child doesn't need you to sit them down like they do in, 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 in the West and, and, and give them the talk or, or for it to be taught to them in a, as a subject in school. Or on a regular basis, they are living with and reading the Quran that mentions certain things and living with a, a, a mother or a sister that doesn't have prayer and then that has prayer and they're told to lock the door at certain times and not enter the room at certain times and they're asked to cover and they're all of these are gradually in the most healthy wholesome manner ever allowing them to understand certain matters that people make you know into a big deal and sit them down and and uh, you know make it a, sh a shocking thing here a child gracefully moves into puberty in in in, in the most uh, 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 comfortable way possible number one number two we don't have the expectations of, oh my God, he's a teen. I have a teen now. I had a friend. She was so cute. I have to tell you the story. I, have a, I had a friend when her when her son, she had only a son and daughter, and when they were like 14 and 15, she came up to me. She said, you know, people keep asking me if they're giving me a hard time. You know, my two teens. Do you think they're giving me a hard time and I don't realize it? <laughs> I loved her reaction so. <laughs> But this is the way, you know, says who? Why, why, do they, why do teens, the teen years, meet, need to mean trouble? They mean rebelliousness and trouble in, in certain societies where they're treated a certain way and where there are certain expectations. But for us, we know that the teen years are the most beautiful years for a child spiritually you can imagine because hand in hand along with the, the, the beginning and, and the the blossoming of their sexuality, it comes the blossoming of their spirituality, hand in hand. This is the hikmah of Allah Azza wa Jal, that during this time, this is the peak, the, 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 the development of the peak of their spirituality. There will be ayahs of Quran, and prayers at night, and certain dua. Uh, really quickly, I want to back up and say from age 7 to 10, there's something very important, which is for the child to have a group. 
that they study with, that they learn with, that they interact with Islamically. Now at this point, the peers are what's important to the child, not the teacher uh, herself or himself. Uh, because I, I wanted to mention this because by age 10, it becomes very, very important now when we're talking about, we talked about logically a child from 10 to uh, puberty is listening to, is, is able to uh, understand things and comprehend things at, at a higher intellectual level. Uh, we said, but, but heart-wise, this is when they begin to get attached to a particular teacher that is teaching them. You need to, at a very young age, while they're still maybe seven or six, you need to be scanning your community and looking for that one person that you're going to bring into contact with your child, that your child is going to become your child's mentor uh, in the future. Because no matter how hard you try, there will always be a, a, a difficulty for you to be the parent and the mentor as well. You need someone, a friend, where at, at the, the, the very, very least, uh, a, a friend where you and her uh, mentor each other's children, if, if there's only two families. But if you have a whole community, then uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it becomes much easier for you to select the person that you feel you want your child to look up to and bring them into contact with that person, have them you know, part of that halakha or, or encourage that person to, to start something where they do, they can be a, a, a mentor to, to the children. Um, these feelings of, of love and admiration and looking up to uh, someone beyond you spiritually are fostered, begin at this age. Like I said, I go back to the whole idea of now, ibadah has to be, the furud needs to be really, really uh, uh, guaranteed. This is when you begin to encourage sunnah and nafil, and a serious regimen of Qur'an. Okay, sunnah and nafil, at first you were just encouraging to love Qur'an and to, and to memorize, and maybe you didn't have a, a, a program in, in mind, but now you have a program for Qur'an, and you're encouraging them like to pray the sunnas before and after, the, the strong sunnas, and you're encouraging him to do, the child to do duha, for example, as in a thing. Uh, in terms of um, uh, 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 rules, in, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, interaction so socially, uh, you need to be very, very uh, uh, strong on uh, the, the Islamic way of interacting with others can go into now, you can go into not diseases of the heart per se, but like for example diseases of the tongue uh, uh, and, and certain hadith that, that really uh, stress how we should interact with others. Uh, the dangers of this uh, age group is that the parents begin to feel they've done their, their job, you know, the child is fine, they're praying, alhamdulillah, it's a girl, she's put on hijab, uh, uh, and so they spend more time with their peers than they do with their parents. I don't care if the peers are angels. Don't allow a, uh, a, 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 a divide to, 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 to be created between you and your children. No matter how secure and, and uh, confident you are of their, their spirituality. Because this is when, what, you know, we know it's enough that we have a hadith that a good friend and a bad friend are like a perfume seller and a, and a blacksmith uh, who will either burn you with their coals or, or uh, uh, upset you with their fumes. This is when friends can uh, be a very big problem. Okay, so now, then uh, after this we have uh, from pu puberty to about 14, 15. Uh, this is when cognitively you need to teach them their Islamic, uh, uh, um, uh, knowledge. They need to. They need to start learning in a systematic manner. Manner, uh, And uh, I am a, a, a very strong advocate of geography and history, Islamic geography and Islamic history, because they need to know where they belong. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is happening. Um, they're held accountable then, honey, according, unless it's something, yeah, I feel it's something 
that is happening very often, frequently, in, as a result of, uh, I mean, if it's not something that runs in the family, as a result of uh, many different uh, factors in the environment. But, uh, you know, you pull down puberty. You pull it, you know, even though the truth is they're not fully mature when, when, when it's happening that young. And you adjust, you adjust things accordingly. So we have now, uh, 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 around age uh, 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 13, 14, 15, uh, the, the beginning of the spiritual awakening, like I said to you. We give them cognitively a lot more uh, information in a systematic manner. Uh, emotionally, it is so important that they have a murabbi at this point. It could be their Quran teacher, it could be their uh, Islamic subject teacher, but they need to look up to someone and feel this admiration and love for them. Otherwise, they will never understand the love the Sahaba had for the Prophet Sallallahu or, or any of the, this love that is that is spiritual. And uh, especially in, in our age where love means only one thing, and uh, 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 they need to realize how elevated and, uh, and, and uh, beautifully spiritual the love for Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala and the people of Allah is. And they need to taste it and experience it so that they don't get confused and feel every time that they like someone or admire someone or they look up to someone that it's uh, 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 the only one interpretation that uh, certain societies have. Uh, worship, uh, I, you know, we need to have complete commitment now, if not love of and, and addiction to. I mean, there, there comes a time when you feel like they're going overboard, or they're doing too many prayers at night, or, or they're doing too much Quran, or they're spending too much time. It's a phase, it'll pass. Don't worry about it. But if you don't have that exaggeration, at the very, very least, you need commitment to the to, to, to the to the fund. And uh, uh, in, in social interaction, this is when there's their, their taqwa, or their, their Islamic conscience, really reaches a new maturity. Uh, the the uh, dangers are that the parents may fall prey to uh, ridiculous theories of uh, uh, teenage years and, you know, this is normal rebellion. Uh, another one is uh, friends, you know, the environment. And a third uh, danger is ideas, isms. This is when, you know, they start uh, uh, so many ideas are presented to them. So you need to give them before they come to reach this age. We need remember I told you to collect the doubts and give them answers and give them proof and evidence for. And as they grow older, you need to keep always keep this in mind. What are they exposed to, and how to what the rebuttals for such ridiculous claims are, so that they have the answers in their mind clear ahead of time. Uh, it would be interesting. I want you to look up where the word teenager first, you know, was coined, and who the f the first person who made up the whole theory that there is such a phase called uh, the phase of of, of, of you know uh, of this uh, this age group, because uh, before this guy didn't even exist. And it caught on, and now we have tweens, and who knows what we have before tweens? There's something new now before tweens. There might be. Okay, so then, uh, so then we come to the whole concept of the second seven years of sahib, befriend. And this is very, very important. You need to befriend, the parents need to befriend this child, and uh, any discipline, any correcting, any nagging has to be done in a, in a kind manner that does not lose, where you will not lose the friendship of, of this person. Okay. Uh, so befriending. And the other very important thing is they need to have a group that they are now that they really identify with. Uh, uh, the befriending also means peers and it means uh, a mentor. 
So you need to have formulated a group that they are part of. If, God forbid, you live in Iceland or some totally isolated area from any other Muslims, virtual friends and a virtual mentor. But you cannot do without it. They need to feel that they are part of a group that learns together, that has memories together, that does things together, and that they have someone that they look up to because this will be their social and emotional and spiritual, what is it called, net, safety net that will hold them up when they go through hard times. In terms of ibadah, they need to have, they need to experience camps. They need to experience now a session if they're not allowed to go to a camp or there's no camp possible, a, a, a session from morning till night, for example, where you know we pray jama'ah together, we break our fast together, then we do all this uh, istighfar together, we read some Quran. To, you know, they ha need to feel what it's like. They need to taste and experience a, 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 a concentrated dosage of spirituality. In terms of uh, socially I and mean, interaction. Uh, we need to stress the inner circle, their inner circle of uh, 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 peers that they have a lot in common with uh, in, in Islam and, and the family. You know, how to interact with these people, how to stay close to them, how to uh, 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 overcome uh, the problems that invariably will crop up when a, a certain group of people are close to each other. Uh, dangers, the dangers we have are uh, the dangers of with, withdrawing from the schedule and the, the atmosphere of the family. We're talking about now 15 to 17. This is after we say befriending. 15 to 17, the scary thing is they withdraw. They pull away from, no, we're not going to have, I can't, I have, you know, I, they can't have lunch with you, and they can't spend uh, uh, mornings with you. You have to insist there are certain things that are part of them. We all need to have together, no matter what. We all uh, sit after Fajr together and, and do Quran, no matter what. Uh, everybody has to check in for dinner. Every, you know, there's no such thing as, and I really uh, can't think of, of uh, a healthy alternative so I really can't stand this whole idea of, of bedrooms, having their own bedrooms. I feel like they're uh, encouraging them not being a part of the family. Uh, so then, uh, okay, so there's that. You have to guard again. Now we come to the very last stage, which is the stage of uh, 17 to 21. Uh, on a cognitive level, they need to complete by 21 all of their basic, basic علم uh, of, of, of Islam. They cannot go ahead and get married not knowing anything about the fuqah of uh, mu'amalat or uh, uh, they can't at this age still not know about uh, hadith or about Quran or but they need to have the minimum of all the alum sharia. This is number one. Heart-wise, this is when uh, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be translated into serving Allah's religion. And a very correct, you know, at first it was almost like, uh, uh, you know, being bedazzled with the, this uh, adult that's in your life, that's a mentor or whatever, not really understanding the, now it's become a very clear relationship. I love this person because they help me and teach me how to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has to become clear in their head why. And it has to become clear that we are together, we love each other, me and my peers and me and this uh, mentor, in order that we can serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion. How best to do so? So it has all been translated into service now. How do I serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation? And these are Muslims and non-Muslims we're serving now. And how do I serve the deen? Uh, so this is uh, 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 emotionally, uh, ibadah-wise, they, there has to be now a, a regimen, a, a, 
of, of, of ibadah that a person does never, never goes down beneath. And they need to understand the concept of, the Prophet says, when you feel yourself enthusiastic and excited and uh, energetic about religion, add to your sunnahs and nafas, so that when you fall down, there's a buffer that holds you up. You never lose the fault. When you're down in the dumps, you've lost your duha. When you're down in the dumps, you've lost your uh, uh, 20 pages of Quran, they become 10, or 2, or 1. But you don't lose Quran completely. And you never touch the fault. See what I'm saying? So they, ha they have to have reached this, through experience and whatever, they have to have reached uh, a steady, a minimum a healthy protection of their ibadah. In terms of uh, uh, socially, yeah, at the very uh, uh, as, as much as possible, they have to be following the, the Prophet uh, 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 rules and regulations in terms of like, fully and completely. And what are the, the, the dangers of this uh, uh, age group? The danger is immersing yourself in studies. You know, they're so bent on getting this degree or, you know, excelling or whatever, all the, it, it, it becomes so demanding that their ibadah suffers. We can't allow that to happen. They have to strive for balance. Another uh, uh, danger is uh, engagement and marriage. Sometimes it can uh, totally sweep you off your feet and immerse you totally in dunya. If it's done with, with always everything, if the child has learned to do everything with the intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it becomes an extension of ibadah and a continuation of serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't sweep you off your feet uh, and, 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 and cause imbalance in your life. But if it does, you need to try to bring the balance back. Another danger is a job, getting money. Once you have money, Money is a test. Used to be so, uh, maybe you were so, uh, uh, a child was so uh, 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 generous with uh, the allowance that they used to get. But now that they have their own job and they can set money aside, they become uh, uh, very uh, uh, stingy. See, so uh, on the job there's mixing. How are they doing on that? How are you doing with your co-workers? Are you business-like and formal? Is that one thing I can, if you ask me for one word that is the safety valve of, of يعني, uh, all interaction between uh, men and women, I'll tell you formality. Remain formal. Do what is professional. No, no socializing. No uh, friendly, smiling, uh, professional, and formal. No. And they say that you're, there's something wrong with you and you have an attitude, marriage. At least I'll enter heaven with that attitude. Uh, so uh, the job, and uh, the last thing is fun. The idea of, oh, you know, you know maybe you're young now, this is what life is all about, and you just finished high school, this is time to have, you know, the whole idea of, you know, do so much work and then have so much fun. No, it's not that way. You, we, our fun is celebrating an accomplishment. And we celebrate it, yeah, imagine it, uh, all the holidays and, 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 and fun times that they have in, in other religions. We have two rates. One celebrating that we accomplished Ramadan and one celebrating that we accomplished uh, Hajj. Uh, or the, fa the fasting of those uh, uh, nine days. But SubhanAllah, yeah, accomplishment related. But the idea of you know fun just for the uh, uh, sake of fun and uh, uh, this is my uh, my 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 right doesn't exist in Islam. Alhamdulillah, I know this was uh, uh, I exhausted you and, and, and uh, you know this is not the way. I mean I, I should have thought of a more interesting, exciting way to, to do this, and uh, we went quickly over the the last part. But you get the idea. I mean basically, if I were to sum it all up and uh, say what are the most important things that we need to uh, remember and think of. You need to be practicing if you want practicing children. It needs to matter to you because that rubs off on them. 
don't ever hold up your childhood as what you measure your, your children's uh, behavior against. Because maybe you are not a practicing Muslim. You say, oh, mashallah, they're so much better than me. So who says you were the best person to compare yourself, your children to? Compare to to Allah requires of them. You know, my child, mashallah, my child, they're nine and they do all the prayers. Why should I make them up for Fajr? Because you should make them up for Fajr. Even if you didn't pray when you were that age. So this is something we fall prey to sometimes. We compare their life today to what we were doing when we were their age, with their age, which that was much less. But there are certain things, inshallah, and soon this is this will be available to you. Uh, I really would appreciate if uh, you have questions, that, if, that all your questions and all your comments were written down and passed uh, on to uh, Dr. Rania, and no, this will really help me uh, uh, help more people and make it more uh, practical or more beneficial to anyone that will be, uh, will be reading this uh, manual. Well, thank you for being patient with me and uh, being such good sports with the, the amount of time and just me talking all the time. Alhamdulillah, Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you all, uh, make all of your children and all of the children that you work with uh, uh, coolness to your eyes and coolness to the eyes of the Prophet Inshallah, all your effort and all your intentions and all your your hard work will not be wasted and you will see the fruit of everything that you pour into these children uh, 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 come to, to fruition manifold. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you and your children beacons that people look up to to learn how to practice this deen. Ya Rabb, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring back the stray amongst our children and spouses and family. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen and give the bad and and, and steadfastness to those who are uh, uh, upon, uh, doing things correctly. And may Allah help us to continue to develop and grow in closeness to Him as long as we are alive. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum sisters. It's been a long uh, day, mashallah, for all of you and for Ante as well. But she's inshallah going to excuse herself, but we're going to do our closing dua. She did ask me that if you have questions, which I'm sure a lot of you have questions, if you can, before you leave, can you please write them down? Right, start writing your questions down or give them to me so that I can hand them to her. If you prefer to put them electronically, you may do that as well, um, inshallah, and send them to me or write them up and, and, and bring them, inshallah, and we'll get them to her as well that way. But before you leave, she actually asked me, before you leave, while they're still fresh in your mind, go ahead and jot them down while we're doing our talk, inshallah. Um, so with that, inshallah, we'll start our du'a. Thank you all again very much for coming. These halakhas do happen on Friday nights throughout the year. They start in the fall. They run with the academic year. They start in the fall and go to the summer. We break for Ramadan, and then in the summer we have the girls' summer camps for the Rahma Foundation. Uh, so we welcome you to attend those, and for your girls to attend the camps, and for the groups, and also to know that the Rahma Foundation just now secured a new location for their Quran program. Some of, you guys, some of you may have girls who are, or even women too, who may be interested in put on and Tajweed and other classes that we'll be announcing through our website and through our Facebook page. So make sure you're following those so that you know what is up and coming, inshallah ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ajma'i. Ya Rabbi ya Kareem. We ask Ya Rabbi al-Alameen to open your doors of mercy and to shower your mercy down upon us. Ya Rabbi ya Kareem, please bless this gathering of knowledge. Ya Rabbi, please bless this gathering and all the women in it. Every step they took and every mile they drove to come here tonight, Ya Kareem. Ya Rabbi, we ask you to bless our teacher and all of the teachers that have taught us even the letter of this day. We ask Ya Rabbi Alami that their light and their guidance, uh, that you never prevent us from their light and their guidance. Ya Rabbi, we ask you to always give us teachers who teach us what is beneficial and that you make accessible to us beneficial knowledge. Ya Rabbi, whatever is not beneficial, we ask you to remove it and to replace it with what is better. Ya Rabbi, ya Kareem, we ask you for all the hard work that our teachers do in preparing and teaching and taking time out away from their families. Ya Rabbi, you bless them and raise their status 
in your eyes, Yara be another day of judgment, Ya Karim. Ya be that they see the fruits of their labor. That each and every one of us, Ya Karim, that that knowledge be knowledge that'll be implemented in our lives. Ya not, be not do not do not hold us accountable for knowledge that we have heard and learned but do not implement. That we do not let us be from the hypocrites, Ya Karim. Ya Rabbi, let us be from the ulama aamineen, those who are knowledgeable and do upon their knowledge. Ya Rabbi, Ya Kareem, we ask you that our children be from those who are rightly guided. And that our progeny be from the rightly guided until the very last day. Ya Rabbi, don't let anyone from our family or our friends or our loved ones or our children be from those who fall astray. Ya Rabbi, anybody who's gone astray on the straight on the path, Ya Kareem, we ask you to bring them back to this deen and let us be a reason why they come back to this deen. Ya Rabbi, we ask you never to be the person that takes people and makes them go further away from Islam and turns them away from Islam, Ya Kareem. But rather be people who their light brings and attracts people to this deen. Let us be like the lighthouses who cast their beams in the darkness. Ya Rabbi, and the times feel dark. We ask you that we be like the, be the lighthouses whose beams of light attract those to it and bring them back to this faith, Ya Kareem. Ya ilahi ya Rabbi, we ask you to be from those who are rightly guided, whose feet are steadfast on the straight track. Don't let us fall or falter on this track ever, Ya Kareem. Ya Rabbi, we ask you to be from those that in the dunya are blessed, and in the akhirah are blessed, and in their graves are blessed. Ya Rabbi, we ask you to be from su'ada and dhari, from those who are happy in both abodes, here and the hereafter, Ya Kareem. Ya ilahi ya Rabbi, we ask you to be from those who, um, Ya Rabbi, from those who you've shown your mercy and from those you've forgiven. Ya Rabbi, we are most in need of your forgiveness. Ya Rabbi, the little and the big, what we've known and what we've forgotten, what we didn't think was important and we belittled, and what we thought was important and wasn't. Ya Kareem, we ask you to please forgive us all of our sins and to give us true tawbah, true forgiveness, Ya Kareem. Ya Rabbi, the sister who took shahada tonight, Laura, we ask Ya Kareem to bless her on her path of Islam. Ya Ilahi Ya Rabbi, keep her steadfast on this deed. Ya Rabbi, let her be a means of guidance, Ya Rabbi, for others. Ya Rabbi, quell her turbulence and anxiety, Ya Kareem. Let her family love and understand her for what she is now as a Muslim, and let her be better for it, Ya Kareem. Ya Ilahi Ya Rabbi, we ask you that all the sisters that have converted, Ya Kareem, that they don't come here with lots of hugs and and love on the first day and then be forgotten. Ya Rabbi, let us show each other true sisterhood. Ya Rabbi, let us be real sisters to each other. Ya Kareem, we ask you to give our children good companionship, suhbah saliha, and to give us good companionship, and to strengthen us to get rid of bad companionship, both for ourselves and our families and our children, Ya Kareem. Ya Rabbi, we ask you that our children be the coolness of our eyes, Ya Rabbi, all the difficulties and pain and struggles, let it, Ya Rabbi, be something that then converts into goodness, Ya Kareem. Ya Rabbi, let them be better than us. Let them be from Hufad, from Hufad al-Qur'an. Ya Rabbi, not just that they, they read the Qur'an and memorize it, but that they have it in their hearts, and their character shows that they are memorizers of Qur'an. Ya Rabbi, Ya Kareem, we ask you that they, that they and us that we be walking, talking Qur'ans. Ya Rabbi, people who embody the Sunnah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And people who love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Rabbi, grow the love of the Prophet in our hearts. Ya Rabbi, grow the love of you in our hearts. Ya Kareem, let us be beloved to you and beloved to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Rabbi, honor us with Islam. And honor us with Iman. And lift us into Ihsan, Ya Kareem. Ya Ilahi Ya Rabbi, we ask you that on the last day we be from those who are shaded on the day when few are shaded. Ya Rabbi, on that day when others are scam scrambling and scared and running every which way, that we are not. That we are clearly identified as part of the Ummah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Demarcated with the nur on our faces from our wudu and our prayers. Ya Kareem, let us be clearly identified as Muslims so that we may have the shifa of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Rabbi, Ya Kareem, we ask you on that day when you ask us the questions that you surely will ask us that you're pleased with our answers. 
Ya ilahi ya Rabb on that day when you ask us those questions and we stand before you alone. Ya Kareem, that you're pleased with those answers, Ya Kareem. No child or no spouse or no friend will be there. Ya Rabbi, accept from us what is good and increase it, Ya Kareem. And let us be from those who fly on the sea not straight into Jannah. Have nothing to do with the hellfire. Ya Rabbi, don't let us see the hellfire or smell its stench or hear its crackles. Ya Rabbi, take us straight into Jannah. The highest levels of Jannah. With the Salihin and the Shuhada and the Anbiya and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rabbi, Ya Kareem, we ask you that we be from those who are in the highest levels of Jannah. Ya Ilahi, Ya Rabbi, raise our hands in remembrance of all of our sisters and brothers in the Ummah. All those who are struggling, all those who are oppressed, all those who are facing natural disaster, all those who are in war. Ya Kareem, let their struggles be a reason why they become closer to you, not further from you, Ya Kareem. And let their struggles be a reason why we continue to understand that you are boss. Even if we don't understand why these things are happening, let us know clearly in our hearts that you know what you're doing, Ya Kareem. Ya Ilahi, Ya Rabbi, ask you to give them back security. Ya Rabbi, give them back roofs and homes. Give them back food and drink. Give them back, Ya Rabbi, their sense of safety, Ya Kareem. Ya Ilahi, Ya Rabbi, ask you to be from those who are rightly guided and our children are rightly guided. Ya Ilahi, Ya Rabbi, all that we learned here today from preconception, through pregnancy, through the baby years, through the, the tamiz and the pre-tamiz years and the puberty years, the teenage years and onwards, Ya Kareem, we ask you to help us implement what we've learned. Ya Rabbi, at every stage of our child's life, we ask you to please bless them and bless us and help us through that, Ya Kareem. Ya ilahi ya let us have children who are spiritually connected to you and are connected to your spiritual teachers and connected to a spiritual family and bond, Ya Kareem, with each other. Ya Kareem, let us be from those who really taste Iman, who really taste the beauty of Islam, who really connect with you in prayer, who connect with you in fasting, who connect with you in giving charity, let us feel, Ya Rabbi, the very things you've commanded us and that you know are best for us. Ya Rabbi, accept from us, Ya Kareem. Accept from us, Ya Kareem. Accept from us, Ya Kareem. And we ask you, Ya Kareem, that we have husn al-khitam. Husn al-khitam. Husn al-khitam. The best of endings, Ya Kareem. And the last of our words be, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad al-Rasulullah. And the last of our deeds be the best of them. والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على الهادي محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين وعلى نية الفضول والهداية والنص والسلام في كل مكان نسألك يا ربي and for acceptance of this dua sisters read with me سورة الفاتحة